Hello, hello everybody and welcome. Uh, welcome to Heart of a Hobbit here on the uh, Lotro Twitch stream. Apparently my camera dropped in the amount of time that I was uh, preparing, so aim a mention. You're going to want to loosen it or it'll pop out. So if we lose camera here at some point, it's because it's popped out from being moved. <laughs> anyway, well, while that is happening, uh, let me introduce you to uh, my Rose and Bloom here on uh, Treebeard. We are here on the Treebeard server. Thank you. Um, yay. Technical stuff sorted, hopefully. So, all right. So hi and welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for coming along and joining me today on this uh, Heart of a Hobbit stream that is in between uh, festivals. So we just wrapped up the Spring Festival on Tuesday, and today is Thursday. So we have been two, two days now without festival, let me tell you. Ah, it's a rough life. Um, but we are uh, heading into the anniversary festival very soon. So let me actually pull up my character in my biography where you can write in you know all sorts of stuff i have put in the dates of the um lotro schedule for 2022 so this is where i just go to look when i'm like what's going on and when i just check my biography so hobnanigans also just happened and unfortunately it was at the same time as the spring festival so i had to choose and spring festival won out on that one well sorry sorry chickens i missed you this year all right, so anniversary event is April 20th, and see, today is the 7th, so 14 days, so two weeks, two weeks away. Um, yeah, very excited, that'll be cool. And this is Lotro's 15th anniversary. So this game has been around for 15 years, um, but I have a fresh new dress on, so you know, uh, we're, we're keeping appearances up. <laughs> you know, they send those hobbits out to, uh, to do repairs every so often and stuff, right? So, um, so yeah, so this year for the 15th anniversary, so every year for the anniversary festival, um, they have like a, a gift box that you get, um, you know, like this is your fifth year, here's your fifth anniversary box and it has all sorts of goodies in it. Um, and the, um, there's a link, um, let's see, I think maybe on Lotro or on the Lotro wiki or possibly even both where they kind of list out those different gifts. So that's been kind of fun. Um, so this year is the 15th anniversary, and they say they're going to do special stuff for us. So I'm really curious to find out what all goodies we're going to uh, have. <laughs> oh, yeah, Aphidil is holding one of the anniversary gifts there. What year was that? Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, can you do, like, a web search for the Lotra anniversary stuff and put a link into the... Hey, Momentra. Hey, Momentra. Thank you, um, awesome. Oh yeah. So there's a, um, so we're taking Dutch lessons because we live in the Netherlands and we're learning Dutch. And, um, there was one of the exercises we were doing where it was like somebody at a restaurant or, or something and, or if they were calling somewhere so, and they, you know, the person who was helping them was like, Hey, moment show. And they like connected them to the person. It was kind of funny. So we, we do that regularly now. All right, so I am uh, in the housing area. I'm here in the homesteads, the Shire homesteads. And I, uh, yeah, there's 11 Zs, right? Yeah, 11 Zs you get for your 11 year. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that because that is a pretty cool emote. I don't have that one. <laughs> Vat for restaurant. Um, it was, no, it was, I think, um, the Makalar. Yeah, they were talking to the the Makalar, and they'd called to, um, you know, check out one of the houses that was to her, and, um, yeah, and the guy is like, you know, which house? Okay, Momentia, and they pass it through, you know. It was just kind of funny. It was funny. All right, I have not spoken to the VIP rewards vendor today. Yeah, Makalar Contour. Um, so I'm going to talk to Wenda Cranesville here, and she is our um, VIP rewards vendor. So you talk to her if you if you are VIP, which you know you don't have to be to play this game. Like you can just play the game straight up, paying no money ever. Um, I appreciate the VIP experience, so I do pay for that. Um, and so this is one of the goodies that you get. 
So you talk to this lady here, Wenda Cranesmill, she's all over the place. Uh, she is in every single neighborhood. So if you have a house anywhere, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you have access to her very quickly. Anyway, so she gives you a quest saying, hey, I'm going to give you some goodies. And then you go ahead and say, hey, can I finish that quest right now? And she says, sure. Here's your goodies. So I have now from her, oh, I have a dress. That's not from her. <laughs> it came back in the mail. Uh, a subscriber's jug, which I am going to consume. Now, it doesn't actually consume the jug. It still sits in your inventory. It'll sit around there for six hours, and then it'll disappear. Um, but it is good for 24, no, for, sorry, 48 hours once you consume it. Um, and it prevents uh, item wear on your all of your gear and everything uh, that you might accrue from combat, crafting, or defeat. So that's pretty neat. And then also we get this little subscriber town services. So I'm going to pop that down here on top of the other one. And when you click on it, oh, excuse me. Pardon me. When you click on it, um, you can do all these things. You can browse the shop. You can open your vault. You can go to the auction house. Hey, let's check out the auction house actually real quick. Oh, yeah. I got two reasons I want to go to the auction house. How are you today, squirrel, by the way? I just zoomed right by and mentioned your comment, but I didn't actually talk about you. So how's it going? Who hot it with y'all? All right. Oh, my computer is just unhappy. Let's see. Let me push this down. And we'll mention. Yeah, it says overloaded. Um, it's already struggling. Yeah, hang on. Uh, okay, you know what? We're going to stop the closed captioning for the moment. Um, so let me know if that's um, impacting you, uh, any of you viewer peoples. And I was going to minimize this. Yeah. Oh, hang on a second. We're going to do some more technical stuff here, real quick. What? Yeah. <laughs> I could have done that a little faster by just typing, apparently. Yeah. Okay. And then in game, what, what is what's your display set? Uh, well, let's, let's just try that first and see how that goes. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, let's see. Yeah. We're going to go in and take a look at my settings here. Graphics. And then overall, yeah. Overall yeah. to like high or medium or Let's something? Go to medium for right now. All right, we're going to try and drop that to medium. So you're not going to get like the most awesome Lotra experience. I apologize. And then drop the processing if you want to. Um, yeah, post processing shouldn't be on, but it okay. might have popped on. When you do the oh, yeah, there it is. Hey, here comes the rain again. We are under like some wind and rain um, warnings or notifications or whatever. So you might hear the rain coming in through, uh, through the microphone. You might not, I don't know, hard to say. Um, okay, so I wanted to go into the auction house because first I wanna see this Elf Queen's dress that I have. Are there others for sale? What, there's none others for sale? Well, heck yeah. Then I'll post mine. Let's get that out there. And this one is, I thought, a good color. This one is the, oh, no, this is the dark green one. Never mind. There's one that's a, a nice blue, like I think it was sea blue. I actually pretty, pretty good on that. You know what? We're going to go crazy. I'm going to go one in five. Wow. Apparently, yeah. Some, like, Aphidil sold one for two gold recently. I was like, what? Who's buying that for two gold? And you can get it for free. Well, okay, it did take like a lot of time. So there's that. How about these notes of affection? Well, most of those are gone too. Yeah, sure, I'll put mine up in the auction house. Why not? Somebody, it's a cute um, handheld item. So that's kind of fun. You know, we'll do some crazy pricing on this though. We'll do 50 for that or one gold for buyout. So if somebody wants it cheap, but they just have to wait two days. There we go. Um, oh, that was the other reason I wanted to be in the auction house though. I wanted to look for the flower. 
We were trying to get the giant flower. There's this giant flower. Let's see if it's in the auction house. Oh, no luck. Oh, well. So, uh, yeah, we had like at least three of us who were trying to get the giant flower out of, it's a drop out of a box. Um, and we didn't, uh, but none of us got it, which was very sad. It's, there's this, this quest where, well, you have to start off by doing kind of an intro quest to, you go and talk to this guy and he has, wants you to put flowers by this lady that he's interested in. And then there's like this whole mix up thing and it's, you know, it's silly. Um, but they get it resolved. And then he's like, Hey, I want to help others. And you know, can you go pick a bunch of flowers for me? And, um, and then I can use these to like help other people give flowers to their, you know, potential sweeties. So that's cute. So you, you pick up the quest and you have one hour and you can go to three different locations. Um, one in Bree, one in Mickledalving and one in um, Arid Luin, not too far from Calendum. And you, you can pick flowers for an hour. Um, so I have, uh, I love the premium wallet. Um, I still have, what do I have left? Um, let's see, because they're primroses, marigolds, so there we go, and violets. I have 13 violets left, 118 primroses. <laughs> Apparently I went a little high on one area. And what did I say the other one was? Primroses, violets, and marigolds. I have no marigolds. So it takes six of each, and it just takes it straight out of your wallet. But um, it, uh, you, don't, like, you don't always know what you're going to get when you pick the flowers. So sometimes you get more, and sometimes you get less. OK, so let's see. I picked up my VIP stuff. We were talking about maybe running some um, instances today on the stream. Let me see, is anybody in our kinship round? Okay, and it's just the pair of us. So if we wanted to do anything. <laughs> I laugh because Aphidil also does a lot of these um, emotes to work, the festival emotes. So I have um, 291 to go through in order to get the permanent emote. But I have gotten the Monster Fair permanent emote. This one's fun. Oh yeah, she's got the fire breathing. I like that one. That one's good. <laughs> oh, now we're both doing it. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So yeah, like it takes a little bit of time because you gotta have a target for the Doom Shroom and the Dragon. So I figure I'll work on the Doom Shroom first, and then I'll work on the Dragon next, I guess. Just kind of work through all 300. I did go ahead and buy 300 of each, though. Oh, that's a good one. That's the uh, mesmerizing one, right? Yeah. Essence of Toad. That's awesome. Um, let's see. I also have Frosty Beverage. Watch out. It's got a kick. That's you, bunk. <laughs> uh, those are fun. Yeah, you can try and do stuff on me, but it doesn't uh, make me do anything. Like, you won't knock me over or anything, which is nice. I appreciate that. Because I don't always want to be knocked over. I find getting up hard sometimes. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's funny. You just fire and ice. I don't know. There's kind of like a, kind of a theme with that. That's kind of cool. Anyway, yeah, the 15th anniversary is coming up in two weeks, and pretty excited about it. Um, so when they're testing things over on the Bull Roar server, um, you can sometimes see ahead of time some things that might be coming. And so somebody was looking at, they found some 15th anniversary um, goodies. So it sounds like they might we might be getting the possibility of carry-alls, a, a medium and a small. They found those. So now I don't know whether that is for people who have hit 15th or if it's like something they're giving to everybody. Like, I don't know. And then it also looked like there were special uh, VIP rewards, like to thank you. Because when you log in, you'll get a thank you gift. And then um, if you're a VIP, you'll get another thank you gift is what possibly might be happening. So, um, yeah, we'll find out in two weeks for sure. <laughs> so the sun just came out. 
No, it's fine. I don't mind it. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> oh, I was going to look at my quest log. Hmm. What do we have? Um, you know what we haven't done recently are missions. We are a little behind on doing some missions. Any interest in popping over and doing some of that? Yeah, let's go do a few missions first. Okay, so we're going to go over here. So our friend Sandar has a yard full of really useful things. Uh, two ingredient crates, which I think I've checked those today, right? Yep, I did check those today. And a map table that when you click on it, it's actually a traveling item. So it's going to take us somewhere. Oh, thanks. Hey, you just gave me a, a new skill. Apparently, I know now how to play cowbell, I think it said. More yep, more cowbell. That's even more exciting. Hat, get it? It's more exciting. <laughs> okay, so here we are in Anak Corfu, which is one of the, um, the war rooms. Hello, Master of the Master. All hail and well met. I hope all are doing fine, you say. Yeah, we are doing pretty good. I, I will admit I had a rough day on Tuesday, though, um, but I'm feeling much better. Just stuff. Sometimes my body does not enjoy, I don't know, food. Um, <laughs> so talking. Sometimes my body gets mad at me when I talk. Um, yeah, things like that. Which one should we do, hon? I'm just oh, we're checking. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Well, uh, you choose. The bloody ritual. The bloody ritual. Sure. All right. And we have the twist is sacrificial. Dun, dun, dun. At low health, monsters in this mission will attempt to end their own life to damage and apply a fear effect to those nearby. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I've actually picked up my... <laughs> you, you, you can go close the curtain if you want to. <laughs> so it's been, it's been like rainy and cloudy and like just overcast all day. We are still under like a, a rain thing. And every so often we just are getting, all of a sudden it just goes like, you know, and then it's gone. Um, uh, and we're also under a wind thing. Oh my gosh, I, it was so windy. I kept looking outside because I kept hearing things and I'm like, are things blowing around? Like, are things blowing away? It's like, it sounded pretty intense out there. Um, so he'll, you'll, you'll be able to get a visual here in just a moment of the difference. <laughs> it's rather, so, cause we're at high lat latitude, we're at like, you know, 52 degrees. Um, so we're talking, well, the Netherlands. So we're also talking like, uh, mid Canada kind of thing. So, so the sun kind of comes at us like right at a good angle, coming right at it. It doesn't come necessarily from up there, it comes like right across. So, you had another day in paradise. <laughs> I always think of cheeseburger in paradise when people say paradise. I guess it's the power of um, marketing and stuff, huh? Oh, are you following me? I'm following you. Ah. We'll just follow each other, actually. All right, what are we doing here? I don't know. Doom shrooms. Oh, did I get a quest? Destroy the ritual obelisks. Hey, let's go destroy some obelisks and some blood waters on the way. Oh my gosh, talking about blood waters. So the a lot of the like um, the kind of seasonal festivals, so spring festival, Yule festival, things like that. They have added a. Um, like a, a couple of instances to each one, uh, including the one we just did, which was Spring Festival, had um, the Red Maid of Naruho. So when you're going through um, the Lone Lands, if you've gone through that part, which you probably have if you've played the game, um, and you know you're helping Radagast and all that, and at one point you end up needing to cleanse an area where oh, the woman, the Red Maid, has become um, uh, bad things have happened to her, and you know she's she's lost her mind. She's been like taken over and stuff, whatever. 
So you have to help her out. Oh, cool. We finished that one. And uh, so in the boss, uh, so for the festival, you get to do just that battle just at the very end where it's just her and the people that are trying to sacrifice themselves for her. Um, and there's three different tiers you can do it on. You can do it on, you know, tier one, which is pretty easy. Um, tier two, <coughs> which is a little more complicated. And tier three, which gets even more hard. Um, and in tier three, there's these ritual blood waters that come out. Tier two also. Um, but, uh, yeah, in tier three, they are, um, they pack a punch. <laughs> there's two of them that come out. And when they do, the first one, one of them's not so bad. The ritual blood water's not so bad, but like, what's the other one's name? Ultimate ritual blood water or something like that. That's not quite the right name, but um, it has like a, a, a prefix, you know, a first uh, word before it. And it's like, it could one shot you. It was pretty nasty. Unstable. Unstable, that's what it was. Thank you. Unstable ritual blood water. It was so unstable, it came and just went whack. I like. Mission complete, hurrah! <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you do you also live in the Netherlands, Master of the Master? No, they said they Another Day in Paradise. You never know, could also be because you are in the Netherlands. <laughs> I think we're not getting those because we're capped, yeah. Oh, you got two, I'm mm -hmm. capped. I'm capped on the uh, Gablaka war, mar war marks. You know, I should check and see if my um, stuff has gone up. Um, my reputation with these folks. Let's take. Let's just go ahead and turn this in, and we'll finish that. Let's see. I got some moats of enchantment, and my reputation went up. Yes, I know some currency was lost. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> it's like, let me tell you this thing that's really sad. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, but I think, what do I need? I want to get, like, the mounts and stuff. Yeah, I don't have the reputation yet, do I? Oh, wait. No. Nope, can't barter. Because your standing is too low. Man. That's the one I want to get up. I want to get my standing up because then I can start spending all these tokens. <laughs> On the right, go over to uh, Ozma. Ozma, she says, the great goblin's treasure. She says, I have a new mission for you. The scouts keeping watch on Goblin Town, Goblin Town, have returned with interesting news. There's a rumor circulating among the goblins of their king's lost treasure. It seems when the previous great goblin was dispatched by the great eagle, the knowledge of where this treasure was hidden died with him. Ha! Well, his loss is our gain. Get in there and find it. Okay. Sure. That sounds like fun. Let's do it. Oh, I forgot to check the twist. Uh, surprise attack. Yeah, so stay inside and let the winds blow. Indeed. Like, it was getting seriously windy out there. I was getting a little nervous because I just got a new um, bird thing. Like, it's it's basically a stick you shove in the ground, and then it's got, like, little hooks that, you know, are hanging off of it, and you can hang the bird feeding things on it. Um, I put it in the ground, and then we got a bunch of wind, and it fell over. Um, so I tried again, and so far we haven't turned into a Monty Python skit. It has stayed up so far. Um, but I did, it was one of those where you, you have the different parts that go in, you know, um, to each other, and there's nothing, there's, so I'm used to when you have something like that, where you've got, you know, this part slides into this part, there's like something to twist it in, like a bolt of some sort, or a clamp, or you twist it, or something, but this was just like, no, you just slide it in, and, and gravity just holds it into place, which, you know, that's cool, um, but I felt like it, it wasn't providing it with a, as much stability as it needed in the wind, um, cause it wasn't like secure. It was just kind of like, you know, it's just kind of wobbling in the thing. So, um, so I took one of the sections out so now it's shorter cause it's really top heavy. So, and so far it hasn't fallen over. And I also shoved it in the ground next to, um, we have some paving stones. So it's like, okay, we'll give that a try. And so far it has stayed in place. So that's good news. Yeah. I bet y'all go to shoot that thing, it'll be gone before you get there. <laughs> before I get there. That's okay. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so stay inside and let the winds blow in the... I uh, put some plastic. We had some cold days recently, like last week. We had like three days in a row that got below freezing, which was a little nuts. Um, and I had just planted some flowers. <laughs> so we'd, we'd gone to Ikea because I'd been meaning to go and get some stuff for a new bed that we just got. I wanted some sheets and stuff and they had what we wanted. So um, so we finally got our butts over there and they had like a little pot with some bulbs in it and the, uh, the, the flowers weren't sprouting yet. Uh, but everything was there, you know, the bulb and this, the, the greenery coming out of the bulb. So it definitely was needing to get planted, right? Um, so I was like, okay, cool. We got to get these in the ground pretty quick. And then I let it sit for like a day or two and they started to sprout flowers. I'm like, okay, this definitely has to get in the ground. So went out, planted them, and then we got the below zero, below freezing weather. <laughs> I was like, this is less than ideal. So I, um, I put some plastic over it from the new bed. Um, parts of the bed came, you know, covered in plastic. So I had these huge pieces of plastic. I was like, hey, hey, I know what I can do with this. So and covered the plants with it. Um, and then <clears throat> in my usual style, I didn't actually get back to dealing with it uh, right away. But that's okay, because then the wind came and blow, blew it off. <laughs> Just blew the uh, plastic right off. Um, so it was like flying around in the backyard. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, there's a lever to do? I thought you already did it. I'll come back here and check out this lever. Well, hey, look at this. There's a lever behind this creepy throne. I guess I've seen creepier. You hear a loud thunk from somewhere nearby. Your favorite is still the Yule, says Master of the Master. Yeah, the Yule, the Yule ones are fun. Let's see, it has, um, hang on, we have a goblin situation. Um, the Yule one, there's a, um, so for, for the festivals, for those of you who are kind of don't recall these things, um, what they've been doing on those seasonal ones is they'll have two instances. Um, one that you can do at level 10 <clears throat> and above, and then, excuse me, one that you can do at level 50 and above. <clears throat> so if you, um, if you're, you know, a young level group <laughs> character, you still are able to do stuff because it's not like, you know, <clears throat> you have to wait until you're like level 100 to be able to participate or anything like that. Um, you can still do the level 10 one. And that one is usually pretty lighthearted. Um, I am losing health here. What is up with that? There we go. So, um, so the level 10 one, it involves um, a set of children who are, uh, have their snow forts and they, um, the, the winds have come in and, and so you have to go and uh, take back their snow forts for them. Uh, so that one's really cute. And then, um, oh, uh, Storvgun. Storv no, yeah, the, is the, um, oh, we can't do it yet, right? Oh no, it's the other one. Hey, Ozma, I gotta talk to you. Um, the Great Goblin's Treasure. What was once lost has now been found. Quite the haul, even for goblins. Excellent work. I'll make sure this is added to the war coffers and put to good use. Yay! Oh, wait, no. Let's complete 20 missions. I thought maybe my reputation had gone up. I was excited for a minute there. Well, that's nice, too. So complete 20 missions? I've just now completed 20 missions. Oh, no, the next 20. That's right. Because every time you complete a mission, every time you complete 20 missions, there it is. Yeah, tier four, I just finished tier four. And all those war marks are like gone. That's okay, we're getting to more than I can hold, which then apparently is more than I need, I guess, but ah, that reputation. Here we go, tier five, that's the next one, cool, cool. That'll be another 20. And then I'm still trying to do all 80 of these. There's a handful of these, 17 specifically, that we have not completed but it's a rotating list and none of the ones that we haven't completed are on today's list. So, wah, wah. but still we can work on our reputation. That's important. <gasps> this person has that giant flower. Orphelia. Hmm, do I message her? 
Oh, what did you go into? Where are you at? Where? Bar Benya. How about the Veil vale Watch Rescue? With Horn? Okay. The Veil vale Watch Rescue. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my reputation up right at this point. Because I want to be able to buy stuff. Oh, the twist on this one is Burning Shield. Some monsters in this mission will apply a flaming reflect shield to themselves. Hmm? What's the story? What's the story, Morning Glory? The watch post of Bizarre Atrad in the Grey Mountains has been ambushed by a horde of dragon kind. Your mission is to rescue dwarves at Bizarre Atrad. Bizarre Atrad! Oh, anyway, so yeah, so the Yule Festival has um, the the Storvagon is the big is the boss from the vaults one, and so that's the one where you're fighting the giant <clears throat> in the Misty Mountains, and um, so there's like avalanche area when, about right by the edges, and um, he's kind of out in the middle, and uh, and then you, he's just a big boss, and so every so often other things show up like snow beasts and whatnot. Well, hello, a bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, so that was kind of fun as well and and so the one that we just did yeah was uh the red maid was the was the big one and um b's big business was the was the cute one i had not given up hope i rescued a dwarf did you get credit awesome he was standing there going ah. Cool, thank you. Let's see. Oh yeah, he was standing there like that. <laughs> the frost horde is no match for you. That's right, dang it. We're good. We're awesome. Yes. Before it says us non tanks had ten to fifteen thousand K morale and the unstable could crit for twenty thousand. So yeah, the unstable um red um spirit was was pretty rough so it, it definitely is one of those it was pretty cool though because that meant that you had to you couldn't just go in and like not at that level um and just like you know yeah not care about the mechanics like you had like thank you you had to yeah you had to pay attention to the mechanics and um so like with that one for example what would happen is when she would get down to lone health the big boss naru hell uh, or naru hell she would oh it's over here somewhere um she would call to some of her minions. There you are. Oh, good hiding place. I had not given up hope. Um, she would call two minions at a time who would try to make their way to the altar. And if they did, they would sacrifice themselves and like restore her health to full or make her harder to hit or both. Um, so ideally, you don't let that happen. Uh, excuse me. So, what we would, but when what we discovered is the pattern was you would take out one of those Kriath, her her disciples, and that's when a red spirit would show up. And so then you would take out the other one, and the other red spirit would show up. So you've got both of them in there at the same time. It got a little hard um, because they they can be pretty strong, and you really need your tank to be. Um, hanging on to them for you. So, hang on, hang on, let me see what's my reputation and how far do we need to get here? Well, there's Goblica. Oh my gosh, I still need another 6,000. Mm. Do I have a reputation accelerator? Let's see, let's find out. I keep these things in my shared storage so all of my characters have access to it in case anybody needs it. I do. That's 5,000, that's 1,000. I'm gonna go ahead and nom that. I don't know that I'm getting reputation anywhere else anyway right now. So I've got, I can turn into Elof. We wish to thank you for your hard work toward the war effort. Your good deeds shall help secure our foothold into Gundabad itself. It's basically, I did three quests for him and that's all that I needed to do there. Um, and neither of these guys have a thing for me, do they? A quest ring, nope. Okay, but this guy's still not ready for me. Oh no, no, I want to get my reputation here so I can spend these tokens. <laughs> I 
I just, yeah, I've got a reputation accelerator that I've just put on. Here, let me see where I'm at. There you go. So I've got a thousand reputation that it will do. And then I can pull out the other ones too. Sorry. You know. <laughs> <laughs> he says, dang it, you, may, you just yawn, and it makes me yawn as well. It's viral. <laughs> I, don't, I know, right? Um, like I said, I had a little bit of a rough day on Tuesday, and so I'm kind of uh, catching back up a little bit. And part of that is that I'm, it's, it's it kind of exhausting sometimes. Um, so let's see, Blockade on the High Pass. Who's that one, Ozma? Okay. So let's check out Blockade on the High Pass. All right, the next mission. My scouts have come back from the high pass. They report that they could not get to the Misty Mountains as an icy blockade constructed by the Frost Horde stands in their way. They fear the blockade will put an end to any dwarves seeking to join our efforts from over the Misty Mountains. I need you to destroy this blockade so that the high pass can remain clear. Can do. I'm all over it, Asma. You got the right hobbit on the job. Um, the twist here is sacrificial. At low health, monsters in this mission will attempt to end their own life to damage and apply a fear effect to those nearby. All right, we've seen things like this before, I tell you. Um, so, yes, so we recently have been just dealing with those red spirits. So they're, they're fresh in my mind. So what we would do when we had to pay attention to the mechanics, have you seen any spoiled pies? Have I seen any spoiled pies? I think you're in the wrong place. <laughs> no, but I've seen some gunk on the ground. Look out, you've got some on you. <laughs> Gotta stay on the lookout. Okay, we'll keep an eye out for spoiled pies. Um, so yeah, so what you'd have to do from a mechanics perspective in... Um, hey, there's an icy blockade. Let's get rid of that. Um, you're standing on top of it. I wonder if you'll fall. You didn't fall. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's so cool. Are you going to jump on that one too? Nice. <laughs> it's Hobbit on ice. Oh, you slid off. I can't go through it. <laughs> you have to go around it. That is hilarious. Oh, anyway, so what we would do, yeah, when we got... So tier one, we didn't worry too much about it. It was usually about trying to get, oh yeah, your health got really low, really fast. These things hit a little harder than I than you expect, perhaps. Um, is that we would, uh, so tier one, we would do all together and we'd just try to basically see if we can, you know, gel as a group because we usually had like the same core four and sometimes five. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this icy blockade while I can. Um, but it's really good if you run it with a six with six people, because that's what it goes to, is it goes to a six person. It's a six person instance. So we would um, often, you know, pick up an extra one or two people that we were um, that we didn't know. Or three. Sometimes we ran with just three of our regulars. Um, more festivity tokens. That's right. We got a lot of festivity tokens from that. It was pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, the, that is one of the cool things is when you do those um, festival instances is they give you festivity tokens, which are a special token that you use with Verbena Greenhand. She's a special um, vendor. Not to yeah, not to be confused with festival tokens. Um, so yeah, ideally they would have named them separately, but whatever. He's on top of it, that's so weird. Oh, I don't have to worry about him. He's got his all question mark on. It's fine, but this guy noticed me. Uh, three of these noticed me. Hi, how's it going? So yeah, so tier one, we didn't actually do too much with the mechanics, just kind of, you know, making sure we gelled as a group. By the time you do tier two, though, you really should be paying attention, you know? Because um, she would have like this ice cyclone. Was that what it was? Water cyclone. I'm just going to leave the... Oh, you're going to worry about the worm? Okay, I was just going to leave it. Eh. <laughs> Um, and so when she did the water cycle, and if you, it's an area effect, and so if you were nearby, it did quite a bit of damage. It, it took out, it caused problems a couple of our runs. So we learned to interrupt that. It made, it made the minstrel sad, <laughs> says Aphidil. 
Um, so we, uh, yeah, we learned to try and keep an eye on that business. Um, and tier two is a good place to try and like, you know, make sure you've got it together. Um, and then, uh, and then that's also when the red um, spirits start to show up. So um, that's when it's good to also be paying attention to that. So what we ended up doing then for tier three, um, you also, oh yeah, the other thing that would happen is it, you would um, have an effect on you from time to time where you were dropping basically puddles of damage. And so if you stood in that puddle, you would take damage. Um, so you were at times dropping those puddles. So not only is it, you know, you are in it, but you're continuing to be in it because it's like right there where you were standing. Um, and then anybody else who happens to stand in it gets damaged. And that is, uh, you know, unfortunate. Oh, um, are you able to um, ban it if you can? Just had a little spam bot try to pop in there. Um, so yeah, so we we would try to do yeah. So, <laughs> um, oh yeah, master the master says that's how the people you didn't know become the ones you do know. Uh, four years by pulling unknown people in. That's how you've made some friendships for the last fourteen years in Lotro. So yeah, that's pretty awesome, right? Um, because yeah, I mean we and plus with Treebeard, it's a nice and small community, and and our kinship we keep it pretty small, like on purpose. Um, oh, I may have just gone through that whole reputation accelerator. No, oh no, I got another 500. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, so yeah, so our kinship is small on purpose. We keep it that way. But the other side of that though means that if we want to run like a six or 12 person instance or even 24 when we were doing uh, that one with the dragon, um, you, you end up needing to pull in other people, but that's okay because, yeah, I mean, there was one that we were doing, yeah, it might have been a different thing, but basically the person wasn't, like everybody was supposed to be on target assist. And um, we were trying, trying to make sure that, what was it? Dar Darba good, that's what it was. It's a, which is a 12 person um, encounter or instance. And so that one, you definitely need to go and grab people from the world. And um, one person was kept kind of failing the mission. I mean, it wasn't just that person that was failing the mission for us. Like a number, it was happening all, all, all over, but one person was definitely struggling to, to get the mechanics down. And so it was really funny because then after everybody was like, yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> there was just like four of us left. And we were like, okay, let's take this opportunity to just work on the mechanics. And so the four of us just ran through it a couple times and we, we you know, taught this other person how to do um, target assist and how to not put have their auto shoot on and like all those things that they didn't know before. So that's another thing that I really like about like, you know, having those pickup groups is how people are able to then filter knowledge around if they're if they take the time to do it i mean there's definitely people that are like well why don't you just do the thing why don't you know how to do the thing and it's like well nobody's ever taught me how to do the thing would you like to and they're like i'm out i don't have time for you noobs or whatever and you're like okay well i guess i'm not going to learn it from you today you know it's like so i appreciate it when people take the time to stop and teach each other you know this is a thing how about this or have you tried this or you know all those sorts of things i, I like that um yeah, I appreciate that when that happens. Um, let's do the final Ozma. Yeah. So let's see, we have a mission here, the Watchers of Iron or Iron. Irony. <laughs> I have a new mission for you. My scouts have come back from Kaivad Sar. They have seen a fortress of Angmarum and banners of the Iron Crown hung from every wall. Oh, had my scouts more time, they would have disrupted the Angmarum there. Instead, they ran into strange stones within the fortress and could not scout any further. Uh, Kaivad Tsar is a deadly fortress and not a place to tread lightly. Okay, well, let's go take a look. Maybe we can help out. So from far from Angmar, the last stronghold, stronghold of the Iron Crown keeps watch over Elder Slade for the forces of Gundabad. Your mission is to destroy Iron Crown standards and lesser watching stones 
thought it might be, in the Tower of Kavadzar. The twist is shared corruption. Monsters in this mission will apply a corruption buff to nearby allies. Nice, right, so that's con convenient for them. <laughs> um, all right, so let's see. You were saying conversation was happening. Um, but the good drop is not for everyone in the raid, so some, so you can do the event daily, yep, and still never get the item you want. That's true. Um, the, um, oh, the one that we were doing before we get the jingle bell, I didn't get the jingle bell. It was sad. Avidil did, though. But yes, the cloak uh, was the drop in this one that we just did. Yo, your health. Okay, you got it. Um, and we both got the cloak. And funny thing is actually we both got the cloak in the same run. <laughs> it was kind of wild. So yeah, so let's see, where's my cloak? And where's my dagger? Oh, here we go. Um, yep. So it's uh, the Carchol's Rewoven Fighter's Ward is the one I have. And um, it's got a couple of um, spots in there where you can add essences. Um, so I was giving up a lot of critical rating from the, from the crafted cloak that I had before, but overall this one's better if I add in that critical rating back in. So that's what I used my slots for is just put critical rating in. Oh, hey, there's a banner. We should destroy it. And then they'll feel sad. Oops, I moved. Let me try that again. Mm. All right, woohoo. So we still haven't done a successful Dar Narba good run on Treebeard yet. <laughs> but one of these days. And also, I mean, we're level 60. I think the instance is level 50 or 60. So, um, yeah, so it's end game basically. Yeah, exactly. It's end game for us. And it's, uh, it's a little exciting. Oops. Oh, there's a standard that I keep trying to run over to. Oh, I have to challenge the spirit. I challenge you. Oh, he comes out. Check that out. We got a spirit that we got to actually attack. That's kind of clever. Um, so yeah, so not everybody in the raid was getting it. That is, that is true. And um, there was, but the nice thing is it was fellowship tradable. So if you got it and you already had one, you could um, pass it on to somebody else in the fellowship. And that was nice. I appreciated that. And there's some cosmetics that um, you could buy from Verbena, excuse me, for, that were Naro Hell the Red Maid cosmetics. And um, you could buy those from Verbena for festivity tokens, but sometimes they also drop in the instance and so that was kind of cool because then we, and those also were festival tradable or uh, fellowship tradable. <laughs> yeah, festival tradable. So we would um, sometimes just trade it around within, you know, the fellowship, throw it in your wardrobe, <laughs> you know, move on. It was pretty cool. Um, looks like, oh, oh, that's the same watching stone, isn't it? Never mind. We've already seen this one, haven't we? Oh, no, we haven't. Oh, hey. Hey, you. I challenge you. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, fine. I'm going to stand here in the fire. But I still defeated you. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> um, he was feeling ashamed and he just quit. I see. <laughs> I've done this myself sometimes. Uh, you love it when people are modest. So, you know... <laughs> There's so much to parse in that sense. <laughs> I get frustrated when somebody is like, feels like they're all that, and then they get frustrated and they just leave. And it's like, if you're that good, then that means, like, to be good means to work in a team, in my opinion, if you're in a group like that. Like if you're doing like a darn arba good where everybody needs to do the stuff. And so when somebody is just like, you know, kind of cops this attitude of like, well, you're all beneath me and I'm out. Like, I don't feel like that's good for anybody. And I don't understand why they would make that choice. 
Um, I don't know, maybe it's some ego trip or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I wish they would stick around and take the time to be like, you know, hey, if I teach you, that means when you run with me, our runs go better and we can run together more efficiently. Like that would make more sense to me, right? To just have everybody do that together. Um, and I feel like sometimes people are gonna challenge this thing. Um, I think sometimes people feel like they're like the holder of some secret knowledge and they don't want to share that for some reason. Um, and so I, I guess in a way I kind of get that portion of it because like, I don't know, maybe they feel some sort of ownership over the things that they have learned and they don't want to just give that away for free. I mean, I, I can see that perspective, but I don't agree. <laughs> I mean, that's what my whole stream is about, right? Is like, hey, do you want to learn how to do something? If I know how to do it, I will teach you. Like, that that's what I do for two hours a week here. Oh, hey, do we, I think we've already challenged that one. Yeah. Where's the one we haven't challenged yet? Aha! Hello, wandering spirit. Oh, watching stone spirit. Are you watching? Ha 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 ha. All right, yay. Um, Exile King North says, hey all, hi. I can't wait for the free uh, class and hi elf, yas. Um, yeah, the, the all sorts of, oh my gosh. So if anybody's watching this and they haven't heard, so Lotro is free to play. You can, you can play the game for free. Um, but some of the newer content, they do make you pay for it. And some of the higher end content and some very, and like some specific things like um, when they introduced High Elf and when they introduced um, Stout Axe Dwarf. Um, and there's the third one. Oh, Bjorning. Um, so the extra races. Hmm? Brawler. Oh, yeah, Brawler also. Let's see. Great work. Let's return and report your success to Ozma. Okay, let's do it. Um, all of those things you have to pay for. But um, they're moving forward. I mean, this is the 15th anniversary. It's time to kind of make sure you're doing things the way you want to be doing things, right? And uh, 15th anniversary in two weeks. Um, so they are. They did an assessment and basically decided to make all of the older content free um, all the way up to then basically just the newest stuff you have to pay for and everything else you have access to. So um, that's very, very exciting. So, yeah. Hmm? Something that gave us more marks. Yeah, and I can't, yeah. It says, well done. With the banners and watching stones destroyed, we should be able to launch an assault against Kavad Zar soon enough. All right, well, good luck. All right, and then I think I just went through my reputation tome. I did, and I still need 4,000. All right, so back to my VIP rewards. See, that's another thing, like you don't have to pay for the VIP rewards, right? You could like be like, oh, okay, I gotta go back to my house and you know, go go to a, a vendor, or I gotta pop over to Bree and go to a vendor and, um, and do my thing, which you absolutely could do. Um, this, for me, is just a convenience thing. Like, I am trading my time for giving the people who make this game some money. I, I figure that's a fair trade in my case. That's a decision that's, uh, that's easy for me to make because I have the expendable cash to do it. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> so I really, uh, yeah, so I like having, being able to just pop into my shared storage, pop into my vault, pop into my wardrobe, whatever, from anywhere in the world. I have found that I get great utility out of that. There are definitely people who don't find that they need to do that very often. And so VIP would be less, you know, useful to them. Totally fine. Totally got it. All right. Horin. Hunting grounds? Okay. It's the top one. Okay. I have a new mission for you. The effort that we have all provided takes its strain on our provisions. Mm. I worry that our stores will be empty soon. We must head to the wilds of Mist Hollow. That sounds exciting. And hunt the beasts there for meat. Okay. I guess we'll go do that. So, meat is needed to feed those in the war efforts. Your mission is to hunt in the wilds and gather meat. Uh, the twist is raging. Monsters in this mission will engage, enrage at low morale, gaining attack strength and attack speed. Okay. Um, so, yes, thank you. There's a producer's letter. Um, and so, if you are trying to remember what are the details of what is free and what might not be free in the future, 
um, that producer's letter, he has like four different exciting things that he was like, hey, there's this, there's this, there's this. I think it's point number four. Um, so take a look at that producer's letter there. So uh, Master says, well, I mean, if you see you're not ready for this raid, you can leave and free room for somebody else so the entire raid can finish it and get the benefit. Yeah, so I do, I, I definitely am on, on track with you there. Um, but what I'm saying is there's sometimes there's people who come in and they're like, okay, you know, everybody needs to do perfect and we're going to get this. And you're like, okay, cool. And they're like, oh, you all are terrible. I'm leaving. It's like, you know, that's not what we're looking for. Like, if you know how to do something, teach me. If there's something you know that I don't know, I want to learn it. You know, or don't, yeah, or if you're going to be like, pissy like that, don't do pickups. Um, but I, you know, I like to do more content. I like to find out how to do things. And like, for example, we played on the Bombadil server almost two years ago now, uh, two years ago this coming summer. And I have not spent a lot of time at capped at like level 50, right? By the time I started playing the game, we were way past level 50. So I, um, I, I didn't spend a lot of time like learning how to use foods, how to use my armor, um, how to, you know, get appropriate armor and jewelry and all that for your character because I was, there was always more forward to go. Um, so I didn't need to. I was always over leveled if I want, you know, for a lot of stuff pretty quickly um, because you, you know, you go through the levels so fast in this game, it seems like. So um, I, uh, w but because we were capped at 50 and we were trying to do uh, the Rift of Nersgashu and um, what's the other one? Let's see, the Rift and. Oh, um, the dragon wing, the whole, uh, Helligrad. Yeah, trying to do Helligrad. Oh, that's funny. And then my screensaver just came up with an image from us doing Helligrad. Um, so, so learning how to do those instances at, at level where you're not over level and you can't just punch your way through it. Like it was pretty awesome. And having people to, to teach us how to do various things and like, Hey, you know, this is what mitigations are and this is why this is important or, you know, or whatever, those sorts of things. And that's pretty, that was really cool. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, I appreciate it when people take the time, like even in a pickup group to be like, hey, you know, we're going to go all on target assist. And somebody says, what's that target assist? You don't go, oh, well, you don't know how to do this. I'm leaving. Instead to be like, oh, well, let me teach you how to do this. I can't, this is the one where, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think we had trouble with this one before. Let's see if I recall that. Um, let's see. Where were we? You were amused by the one who explained how to do a fight, then got frustrated that we didn't do a thing. They, yeah, there was something that they were like, why didn't you all do this thing? And we're like, why didn't you mention it? Like, they literally did not say... They wanted us to do whatever it was, like step left, uh, you know, on the third beat or something. Um, and we didn't do it. And they're like, why didn't you all do it? And we're like, we didn't know we were, like somebody wanted us to do that, but sure, I'm happy to do it. Let's do it. And they're like, I'm out of here. <laughs> it was like, okay. <laughs> um, where are my from and what is the weather? We are in the Netherlands. Um, and the weather here, as mentioning earlier, we are um, getting waves of heavy rain and then and crazy wind and then it's like psh, totally clear right now it's clear in fact it got so clear it was so sunny that the, the sun was like shining right and it was pretty intense let's see oh we finished the meats let me turn that in hooray um okay well i got more modes of enchantment but my goblaka war marks keep getting left behind so sad are you doing the last embers is that the next one yep okay i'll be right there so let's see, um, my scouts have just returned from Ashmar Zarak <laughs> with troubling news. It seems that Gorgar has allowed some strange orcs into his ranks. Chief among them is uh, one of the Gashfra clan of Angmar. Hmm. If the stories I heard from the Gashfra bear any truth, we have much to fear from this alliance. You must go to Ashmar Zakara and find the orc known as Draposh, defeat him and douse the last embers of Nurzgashu uh, for the Zelkra, Ruka, and the Gablaka. Okay. 
<laughs> they have some wild names and things. Oh, and our twist here is some monsters in this mission will apply a flaming reflect uh, shield to themselves. We got that burning shield one again. All right, here I come. Um, oh, before, what is your name? <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right, Master of the Master. I think they were just kind of a show-off. That's what I was talking about, is that kind of thing, where somebody seems like have a, a head full of themselves, but they're not necessarily... Um, they struggle with the whole team play, team player kind of thing. And that's the sort of thing, though, where I'm like, I am happy to help teach them also how to, you know, work as a team. Like, we can... These are skills we can learn. Um, but some people don't want to take the time for that, I guess. But, I, like I was saying, but, the, but I started to, is I kind of enjoy with Treebeard how we kind of keep running into the, some of the same people over and over again. Um, and, oh, any sign of Dragbush. What do we think Dragbush is? Humanoid? Oops, hang on, we're in combat. I will look in a moment after I get rid of this black arrow guy. Whoa, double box, and let me get out of that. All right, so Huonoid. Also, I am poison. That's exciting. Um, yes, I can highlight him for you. I think I smell him in this direction. <laughs> well, you know, it's a special hunter skill. Like, I, I, I can't really teach you. It's a, it's a long series of information <laughs> to know how these things smell. <laughs> You pick up a scent and then, you know. It's like when somebody is a, a smoker and they sit in a, in a chair often, and then after a while the chair kind of smells like the cigarette smoke. It's like that. <laughs> Goodness. We got double box there and that was a bit rough. Oh wow, I'm almost down. I'm about to be. Oh, I got down to 500 health. Uh, can you heal me? Thank you. <laughs> Just in case I have a dot. I'll be fine. It'll be fine. This is fine. We walk around the corner and find somebody. <laughs> no! <laughs> hmm? Oh, I haven't been. I guess I could be using foods. <laughs> We're almost done, though. I haven't been eating the foods in the game, it's true. Oh, I forgot to see what he said. Oh, well. Um, so, for example, says Master of the Master, once we did a raid, Anvil of Winterstith. That's like a, what is it, like a 130? Uh, you were fully geared and had all your boots and food. You were just terribly lagging. Oh, that's so frustrating. Uh, and you're trying and trying, but after like 10 tries, you left and let somebody else come in so they could do it. And that, that is totally fair. That is absolutely fair, right? Because hopefully you'll get the chance to come back and do it another time when, you know, you're not lagging. So, yeah. That, that is cool. That is, that is kind of you to do that, definitely. Uh, let's see. Okay, so he's well done. I have heard tales of the Gashra, Gashfra of Angmar, but you have faced them in battle and lived to tell the tale. Let us hope Gorgar does not hide so many other surprises within Gundabad. All right. And, hey, I'm ready to advance. This one, you have completed many missions and done much to aid the peoples of Middle Earth. Hang on, pull up my thing. How much closer am I? Still need 2,000 reputation with these people. Oh, I gotta pick one. Um, I think I decided I like the crafting materials. We'll just take that. Thanks, man. Oh, <laughs> there's reputation acceleration tomes on the character box. Oh, well. All right, and then there's one more uh, mission with this guy. The Throne of Thara Tharazar? Thar Tharazar. Yeah. I have received word that Starcald is under attack by a raiding party of orcs. It seems they are led by a hobgoblin of the Frost Horde who calls himself Graznul, but I do not care what he calls himself. You must travel to the Scarhold at once and break this attack at any cost. For the Zelokra, Krawrka, for the Goblaka. All right, and our twist is inspiring presence. 
The monster commander in this mission has an aura that buffs any nearby allies. Okay. So, take out the boss. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to uh, teamwork. Yeah. For the incomprehensible. <laughs> For the... There we go. <laughs> I'm sure that's uh, close enough, right? Yeah, they, they have some Dutch feeling to them, don't they? Like a little bit of Dutch, a little bit of German. Uh, a little bit of, what, Norse, perhaps? Can I track machinery? Don't think I can track non-living <laughs> things. Don't think machinery is living. Nah. Um, to, we're to find the missing piece of the gate mechanism. That's our current objective. I don't think I could find things that aren't alive with my hunter skills. Hey, but hey, I found a piece of the missing gate mechanism, a steel wrought handle. Open the gate uh, to the throne. Okay. Let me see if I can find a gate. I don't see a gate. I see like a portal looking thing there. That's kind of wild, actually. Does that take us to... Uh, What's that one? Uh, the Stargate instead of Stargate? <laughs> feel like we're going to, yeah. Zoom! <laughs> okay, so we're not going through the Stargate. I gotta, we got to find this uh, gate. And I can open it because I have a mechanism. Don't forget your transponder. <laughs> oh, hey, I found a gate mechanism. It's glowing for me, at least. <laughs> All right, with a heavy creak, the gate opens. Hoorah! Go team us. Team of two hobbits on the loose. Watch out. Hey yeah, man, there we go. Sorry, my camera angle went funky there for a minute. It's so funny because like you know how I don't know if, if you guys are like this, but like for me, I get kind of a camera angle that works for me, and like kind of a distance from my character that works for me. And um when I see other people streaming and I'm trying to watch them play or something, like if their angle is somewhat so different from mine, I just like, I, I want to reach and grab it. <laughs> and I have to really remember like, I cannot use my mouse to change their screen. <laughs> it's funny. All right, Grasnu falls defeated in a, in a wisp. Look at that, we're like snowstorm big time. I don't think you did that. That is wild. That's pretty cool. Are you that? Yeah. I can go stand in the middle of it. Like, wee, wee. Hey, do your ice thingy. That ice uh, thing that you've got. Oh, and I can do my drink. Go, 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 go. Yeah, see, now there's extra ice in here because you're doing it. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost in a snowstorm. <laughs> okay, here I go. <laughs> I do love the little uh, question marks over the head. That's so much fun. I can't let the box go unopened. It's just, even though I know I don't get any. You got two? Now it says I have acquired zero. It says you got two, interestingly. That's funny. Uh, let us return and bring word of your victory to Horn. Horin. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so I think it says that I see that you got them, but it doesn't see that it's uh, turned it off. Yeah, it is quite like a Stargate, wasn't it? I used to run a, a sci-fi and fantasy convention, and we had some folks that were Stargate cosplayers who had made a, a Stargate like out of cardboard and wood and stuff, but it was pretty cool. Um, and so they would bring it sometimes. So that was, that was fun. People enjoyed that. Uh, I shall see to it that Star Harald's defenses are bolstered at once. Let us hope it is enough. I do hope it is enough. Uh, oh, man, how much closer? Oh, I need 1,000 more. I think there are no more Gamblaka missions of the day. That's sad. You know, if I thought about it beforehand, I'd be there because we did a couple without the, uh, the bobble doodle. Without the, uh, in, the accelerator. 
And these are coffers of things that I don't think I am too worried about yet. Now, I just really want to spend my tokens on pets and mounts and stuff because I can. Because I have so many. Because that'll cost 80 for that one. And then the pets will cost 80. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be able to buy everything straight up and still have a lot left over. All right. Oh, and then the housing decorations. Um, although I don't know that I need chairs and beds and benches. Feeling like I'm feeling pretty good about this stuff I have in my house currently. <laughs> Definitely not an explosive barrel. The dragon skull, though, one of our kinnies got that. And it's a huge yard item, so she has that in, out in the yard. That is pretty cool. I, that is a lot of fun. Um, you wish it was a Stargate so you could go to Middle Earth. <laughs> I don't know, though. Like, it's that it's the what you don't know versus what you know. Um, and like, I I know the problems of this world, and um, excuse me. So I don't know if I would be prepared to like live in a world that had different problems. <laughs> like, and I and I say that with, like, with the conscience of like I've lived in a number of different countries, and so you know each country has a different government, and a different way of doing things, a different culture, and um, and and so you know there's things that you lose by leaving one place, but there's things that you gain by going somewhere else. And um, like living in England, you know I gained healthcare, but I lost access to like Reese's peanut butter cups. Um, I it was yeah, those are the same. <laughs> yeah, those are the same. <laughs> Those are equal value. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, well, so yeah, maybe not quite equivalent there, um, but just as an example of things that could fit into each of those columns. <laughs> um, now, um, now we live in the Netherlands and we have healthcare. Um, I don't have access to Reese's Cups here either, I don't think, but that's okay because I have access to like Dutch and Belgian chocolate. It's actually, I think it's kind of superior to Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So I, I think I'm on the winning end on that one. I'm feeling pretty good about it. <laughs> sure, the land of milk and honey has unlimited milk and honey, but does it have Mountain Dew, right? Like. Yeah, Tolkien doesn't go into like where they are on sanitation and germ theory. Uh, those would be important if you're going to be uh, moving somewhere into a different uh, world. Like, and also, the question is like, if you got thrown into Middle Earth, first of all, like, where? You know, are you? Are we talking about like, are you in Moria? Are you in the Shire? You know, are you in Lothlorien? Um, and also, when? Like, we're talking first age, second age, third age, fourth age. Like there's there's definitely different things happening in different places at those times. Like for example, I wouldn't necessarily want to be, I don't know, let's say an orc dropped into Lothlorien Third Age. That that would pre be a really short trip. <laughs> things would not go well for me. Um, but you know, a Third Age, Second Age Hobbit, I, you know, I could deal. That sounds pretty good. Maybe even a fourth age hobbit. I'm not sure. We're not, you know, we don't know exactly how they, how they fared after the war. But you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Welcome to Arda. The world trees were just taken out by Ungoliant, so it's going to be a bit dark for a while, <laughs> right? So yes, the the when, <laughs> as well as where and who am I? Like, do I go in as me? Because um, if I go in as me, I don't. I mean, I'm pretty short, but. I'm like bull roar took short, um, like they I could ride a horse, you know. Uh, so I don't know that the hobbits would take me in. I'd probably be too tall for the hobbits. And I'm tall for a dwarf. Yeah, a bit, a bit. Yeah. So what am I stuck in Bree? Although you know what, living in Bree wouldn't be so bad because there's hobbits there and there's you know men folk there, and so that's all right. That wouldn't be so bad. And at least one in. <laughs> at least one. Um, you said something about other um, things. We could go do the Bilbo Baggins ones that are in Rivendell, or we. 
Okay. My only concern is that uh, I like following you around. <laughs> I think it'll be pretty straightforward. Okay. We, we can see if they, we can two person them. I'm not sure. All right. We're going to go and try a resource instance. It also counts for Legendary Moria, which is something that we are working on. Um, so 21st Hall. Sure. 21st Hall it is. All right. <laughs> we both are pushing our keyboards at the same time. It's like, wait, what happened? <laughs> so you would rather, um, hang on. Oh, let's see. I think I'm still... What? When did I get off of my regular, my goofy mount? Hang on. It's not Ale Association. It's not Goat. It's not the Honey Goat. There it is. The Goat of Arid Mithrin. I have a lot of goats for a hobbit. But this is the one that matches my outfit. So that's what's the most important here. It is Belangreich. All right. Belangreich. Um, but you say you'd rather be... In Middle Earth, where things are so simple, there's black and white, good and bad. There is no no nuances like here on Earth. Seems like it'd be a much easier world to handle. Just to be the bad and get you to paradise, uh, and you get paradise. Yeah, sort of. Um, I would say though that there are a lot of nuances in Lord of the Rings. I mean, sure, it's like Sauron. Okay, yeah, and Malkor. Um, but Saruman, at some point, he kind of shifted, but he, there was a point where he was in that in-between space, right? So, and he's not the only one. Um, so I think there are some more nuances, but to, yeah, you're probably right that there's probably less of it in Middle Earth than there is in, in, our, in our world, perhaps. The Minas Tirith Planning Committee. What? The Minas Tirith Planning Committee doesn't have bribery charges levied against it that go to court for two years. <laughs> right, there might be. Yeah, oh yeah, so you get um, uh, uh, the guy, the steward of Minas Tirith. Um, Denethor, thank you. Um, so. No, Denethor. We'll go. I'm, I'm specifically thinking of Denethor. So Denethor um, was not a bad guy, but he um, was seeking knowledge, and he was using the Palantir that lived at, in um, in Minas Tirith, um, as there had been like a network of what, like five or six of them around, and so he was using it, not realizing that he was being, you know, basically used by Sauron, um, but otherwise he's able to get, you know, information. So was Denethor good? Was Denethor bad? Like you could make a case for either side on that one. Okay, so this is a resource instance and we just ran our way over here from the 21st hall. Um, this is Bultkar cut at the root. So the objective is to defeat the leader of the intruders within this location. and. This guy who knows about it, he is Berkney of the Iron Garrison. Excuse me, and he's been tasked with the reclamation of Boltkar. Within, there lies a vast store of lumber, which we could readily use to begin repairs across Khazad Doom. Unfortunately, we cannot claim the storehouse until the intruders have, within have been dealt with. Perhaps with your aid, we could strike terror into these intruders and drive them out. I am certain that these intruders have a leader, someone or something that holds sway over them. So quickly, we enter. Bultkar dispatch the foe who commands the rest of those within. So the Iron Garrison has created a diversion, drawing the bulk of the intruders out of here. And they're, so they're getting us, they, they think they can buy us about, about an hour's worth of time. Uh, so during that time, we can enter and exit to freely complete the tasks bestowed upon us. However, after the hour has passed, the Iron Garrison can no longer guarantee your safety and thus will bar access until they can once again muster an offense to draw the enemy from Bultkar. Okay. So we're going to give it a try. Oops. Did I actually? Oh, there's two more. Hang on. Out on a limb. Hello, friend. We at the Iron Garrison have begun the work of reclaiming Moria 
from the foul creatures that now reside here. My task is to retake the warehouse bolt car from the creatures that reside within. Um, alas, the great numbers make it difficult to claim the warehouse storehouse as my own. Perhaps you can help me with that. So we're going to defeat 20 intruders. That should thin it out a little bit better for him. And then he also says, we of the Iron Garrison are not just simple guards or miners. Um, we are, to an extent, scholars of our professions. We know of weapons and armor that bear great lineages. Our records show that there may be even other tools and implements that bear a high lineage as well. Reading these records, I'm most interested in learning of these implements. I do not know if such things uh, exist within Boltcar, but I would be interested in studying any tools you may find. So we're going to try and find some axes, perhaps eight of them, no less, no more. <laughs> All right, can we go in together? No, we have to do it separately. That's annoying. Not happy. <laughs> and I talk a lot. Um, yes. So I've been calling you Egathar, but I guess it E.G. Arthur or is it Egg Arthur? Like E.G. as an example? Is there a preferred way for pronouncing your name? <laughs> and also, hello. Um, so Saruman, using the Palantir, you say, is like modern people using the internet, both good and bad. See? Exactly. So how, you know, at that point... How can you decide whether is Denethor good or bad? He's using the tools he has available to him. It's just unfortunate that he is being manipulated by somebody else who also is aware of how to use these tools. Um, but that in itself doesn't make him good nor bad, right? So, and um, let's see. Saruman and Denethor. Yeah, oh, I can't go that way. Um, Master of the Master says, I believe Denethor was a good fellow by his perspective. He wanted well-being for his people. Right? Exactly. Like, that was his driving thing, right? Is to be a good steward. I think he really did want to be a good steward. And I think he believed in his heart of hearts that his um, offspring, and specifically the older one, um, was going to be, like, an excellent steward and better than any other steward that could possibly be found, you know, upon all of Middle Earth. Um, and, and so I think he, you know, he got some of his egotistical nature about himself because of that, um, because that he had, he just believed that so strongly. Um, oops, I can't go up. That's not a ramp up. Let's see, there's gonna be some stairs around here then, is my guess. So, um, either is fine, EG or egg. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel like I want to pull out some Latin there. Um, <laughs> exempli gratia, Arthur. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll just try and remember to call you egg. I can probably remember to do that. Oh, hey, I see a ramp. Awesome. Uh, yes. Oh, and hey, there's something sparkling. Oh, I forgot to pick up the things. I took names off. I should probably be watching for those dwarf and hand axes. Whoopsie. All right, let me run over there and grab that axe. Oh, cool. Some of the humanoids. Oh, I've already collected five of them. Wow. They're just dropping them right into my hands as they fall over. That's convenient. All right, here is a ramp. All right. So yes, I agree. I think Denethor was a good person. And I really find that curious because I did not pick that up before, right? Like in my first, you know, readings and viewing of the movies and all that, it's, it, it's all intertwined in my brain. So I'm not even going to try and pick that apart. Um, but I did not pick up on those nuances about Denethor. And I thought he was just like mm, very consumed with himself and and the glory of his family for example like that's what i saw and um and i was i was obviously missing you know a lot more of his story and uh and so i really appreciate in lotro when they do the um midsummer festival and I mean, I'll try not to spoil too much, but basically there's a point where 
um, Gandalf is giving a speech and people are grumbling about Denethor and he is like, no, look, he, you know, d um, we're not going to stand around here and say ill things about him, basically. And so I appreciated that he brought that perspective um, and brought it so strongly that it was really hard to ignore. <laughs> okay, so I have... Um, oh, I've done the dwarf hand axes, and I've done something else, but I thought there was a big bat I needed to find. Yeah, it, cut, it wasn't on my thing. Um, I need to defeat, defeat the leader. I need to find the leader. Northwest, we're looking for a ramp by here. Okay, so hang on a second. Wow, there's like a huge pile of, of stuff around here, though. So much wood. And I'm a wood collector, so guess what I'm doing first. <laughs> um, so let's see. B4 says, I think the 2001 to 2005 movies got to start slow but went faster and faster. So by the time the movies got to me in Astera, there's so much to get through. The more subtle de details about Denethor's character get lost. Sure, absolutely. And I mean, and he did make bad mis bad decisions. Like, you know, sending his his only living son at that point off to what he was very clearly a suicide mission um, for no other reason than what he was he was pissed off. Like. Like, there's there's more nuances to that, but it comes off definitely as that way, um, and it, it is really uh, difficult to watch that, you know, and and also how he is living, you know, in this world of luxury and this world where he has um, anything he needs, including rich foods and um, the ability to um, not suffer as you would think. Now he was suffering, suffering uh, mentally and emotionally, but physically he had access to everything that he needed to stay healthy. And um, was it in the books where the, um, oh, harassing Dark Claw, yeah you are. Um, where was, oh, who is it that's, there's that Pippin? Who is it that ends up, Peregrine Took, yeah, so Pippin. Um, who ends up in Minas Tirith, and um, he's working with the guards and stuff, you know, and they take him on a tour and showing him around and everything. And like, they they kind of, if I recall correctly, they're kind of apologetic by the fact that there's like not much by way of food for everybody. You know, they're like, this is your soldier's food ration. You know, this is what you get. I hope it's enough. You know, that kind of thing. Um, whereas Denethor is, you know, living up at the top and, and has access to as much food as he wants. So it's, you know, so there's definitely um, a dichotomy of where he's at mentally and where he should be at as a good leader. Um, I mean, there's a gap. He's not there, right, at that time. Um, yeah, Master of the Master says, yes, uh, the speech of Gandalf there was just about right. You loved it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Gandalf knew about the true nature of Denethor and his true intentions. Right. Exactly. Like he wanted the best for everybody. He just got, you know, he got warped basically. I have not found the big bad yet. So let's see, do I need to go up more? I don't think there's any more up on this level I can go. Oh, wait, did I go this way? Go this way. Is there anything in this direction? I would say no. Okay. Yep, I would definitely say no <laughs> as I fall down. <laughs> um, hmm. Not sure where I need to go. We'll keep. This is why you get an hour, though, right? Can I get down from here? I did go up to the top level. Um, where I went to, there was no more to, go, wait, there was a bunch of wood in there? Yeah, I collected all the wood. There was no cave claw. Nope. Talk to Berkney, talk to Berkney, bring the dwarf hand axes. No, oh, well, I guess I got him. Well, that was, uh, I guess I was talking and didn't notice I took out a big boss. 
That's a flex, isn't it? <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm just all about the wood collection, apparently. You know, pew, pew. Okay, is there wood? Uh, all right, I guess I should figure out how to get out of here then. I think it's not far. So this is a resource instance, and when I finish this, it does count towards Legendary Moria, which... Let me go ahead and pull that out, too. Oh, actually, I'll pull it... Never mind, I'll pull it up when we get out, um, just in case it takes it off of the bar once I, you know, do the thing. So hang on here. Ooh, I think Corey's back tomorrow. So on Fridays, um, the Tolkien Professor uh, streams here on the Lotro channel, um, on the Lotro Twitch stream channel here. And let's see, Fridays. Nope, maybe it was no S. This is why I should copy and paste, but it's okay. Oh my goodness. Sorry. I, D, A. There we go. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Uh, that's hilarious. Okay, let me turn these in. Um, bum, bum, bum. So that will get me an Iron Garrison resource token. He says, with the defeat of their leader, we have already observed disarray among the remaining intruders. Hurrah! The Iron Garrison should have no trouble reclaiming the storehouse. Now, funny enough, I'm going to get reputation with the Iron Garrison guards. I'm already at max with them, so that's kind of funny. Um, oh, let me pull up. No, not you. Sorry. Legendary Moria. So if you are on a legendary server, um, there's three areas that have these things called legendary blank. So there's legendary Angmar, legendary Moria, and then legendary something darker and deeper. Um, Mirkwood or maybe after that. Was it Mirkwood? And then legendary Isengard. Oh, there's legendary Isengard. I forgot about that one. That one's there too. Um, so anyway, so you, when you pick up the legendary whatever quest, it'll have a list and it'll be like, hey, complete X number out of this list and to, you know, to aid those in Moria, as it says here. Um, and then when you complete that, you get a uh, five legendary coins of that. So I'm doing legendary Moria, so I'll get legendary coins of Moria. And you can exchange those for, there's um, a small list of things. There's the quartermaster doesn't have a lot, but it's like a title. Um, there's sometimes a cape, um, but there's a couple of housing items that are unique to the legendary servers. Um, they were available during Bonder, Bounder's Bounty, the Bounder's Bounty event, um, and uh, haven't been available like since then, uh, except you can get them in the legendary servers for these legendary coins. So I, uh, I definitely enjoy trying to get the coins so I can get all the stuff. Because I like to collect all the things. Um, so the cool thing is then it'll probably knock an item off. Well, let's see if I just set this over here. Um, Cause this is, what is this? Bolt car. Oh, maybe it already knocked it off because I turned in the main one. That's probably what it did already. That's okay. All right, so let's turn in this one. Hey, Berkney, Berkney. Uh, built car out on a limb. I never realized how numerous the intruders within built car were. It's good to know that they were not too much trouble for you to dispatch. Yeah. Um, your efforts have helped greatly in furthering the goals of the Iron Garrison. And for that, you deserve a reward. Sure, my dude. And then we have Bolt Car Sharp Company. So your search has borne fruit, has it? Thank you for this. The promise of finding a hand axe of great lineage makes your efforts worthwhile. <laughs> Master of the Master says, I love how the Ilex wood is still the best tier of crafting mats. <laughs> makes you feel nostalgic for old Lotro times. Indeed. <laughs> Um, oh man, I love collecting stuff. All right, so this one is all's well that ends well, with all as in like the tool. All right, this guy says, greetings, I am Torfi of the Iron Garrison, um, tasked with the reclamation of Sjer Tharaka. Within, there lies a vast store of lumber, which we could readily use to begin repairs across Casa do Lumber. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we cannot claim the storehouse until the intruders within have been dealt with. Perhaps with your aid, we should could strike terror into these intruders and drive them out. I am certain that these intruders have a leader, someone or something, that holds sway over them. Quickly enter and dispatch the foe who commands the rest of those within. And it's the same dealio. You get an hour. Um, you got time. 
I'm not sure why you would need an hour. But anyway, okay, A Tale of Timber. I have a task for you. It is said that many records were kept within the walls of Sajer Tharak, but they were lost when Moria fell to Durin's Bane. I would ask you to seek out these ledgers as you journey within here and bring them to me. The more we learn of our past, the more knowledge we will have to drive forth the orcs from Kazadum. You know, knowledge of the past is, I am, I'm for that, dude. I will support you all over on that. Hello, friend. We of the Iron Garrison have begun the work of reclaiming Moria from the foul creatures that now reside here. My superiors have tasked me with leading the efforts to reclaim Jerotharak from whatever intruders re reside within. Thinking myself somewhat competent in battle, I tried my best to expel the undesirables within. Unfortunately, I am hardly a warrior of repute and was forced to withdraw. I can't believe a dwarf just told me that. On the other hand, you look like you have got it in you to handle all manner of beasts or orcs. Might I hire you to aid me in my efforts? Defeat intruders. Absolutely. I will go and defeat intruders and, uh, you know, relieve you of whatever wood might be causing you problems in there, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, yes, we've never heard of those other fancy woods on Treebeard. Fancy wood, what? Ilex is where it's at, man. All right. So, let's see. You have entered. The noises ahead suggest some, something. <gasps> something else is in here with you. Dum, dum, dum. Like that pile of Ilex wood? Hang on. There's a cave claw in my way. I'll take care of that. Okay. <laughs> That's really what it's about. Your priorities, man. How much wood have I collected? Let's see. I don't, I don't have my... Um, carry all on me right now. 38 logs, that's it. Man, gotta get on that. Hey, Cleave Clobber OR. Shall we have a conversation? I think I will win this conversation. <laughs> oh wait, there's some more wood. I don't know that I care about these cave claws. I mean, I should, I suppose I gotta help, you know, make it so that these dwarves can come in. I know these, these cave claws are kind of scary for them. Interrupted. Oh, I hear it coming again. Yep, the rain's just coming again. It just got really noisy outside and, uh, yeah. It's, it's blustery out there. You're hoping what survives? Our roof. Why would our roof not survive? Oh, so we have a, like a, this is an add-on that was done at some point um, after the house, the houses were built in like, uh, was it the 80s, I think. And then at some point they um, came through and basically did an extension on this whole row. There's like a row of like six houses around here along this, this set here. And um, they did an extension on all of them at the same time. So it's really interesting looking at the um, cadaster records, the um, property, like the property records. Um, anyway, so the roof that's right above us here is actually flat which is common in the Netherlands, I've discovered, that they have some very slanted roofs, like on the top, but often you'll find some very flat roofs as well, and they don't seem to think that that's a problem. Um, I think it's a problem, but most of the people are fine with it, so whatever. Anyway, it is, uh, unfortunately, our flat roof does have a leak, and that is very sad for those of us who don't like to have leaky roofs, for example. Um, so yeah, hopefully this one, because uh, we had somebody come out and take a look at it and they're like, basically the way our roof is set up, there should be more um, stuff like up by the house to, you know, should be doing a thing. And um, because there's like a door and stuff there, oh, there's wood in this corner. Um, it's, it doesn't go up as high as it's supposed to. Um, hey, I see the feet of, what might be dwarves. Oh, we have to, we should remember to take a look at that when we get higher up. That looks really interesting. All right, let's see if we can get upstairs though and take a look from up there. Um, oh, you proceed deeper into Sajar Sakra. A light of an entrance fades as you enter the unknown. Dum, bum, bum. But hang on, I wanna see these dwarf statues. Oh wow, they're so huge. I'm like at his waist. That is really cool. All right, we'll keep uh, burrowing further, ha ha. Get it? Because there's cave claw burrowers in here. 
<laughs> you didn't get the uh, cave claw part of the conversation. Is it a foreign language? They want they want me to defeat some cave claws. That's all. In shabrak or something like that. Gablaka. It reminds me of what is it like Klingon? That's what it reminds me of. I wonder if dwarves and Klingons are related. That would not surprise me. They like, they both like their axes, that's true. And they're very proud of their beards, you know. Um, yeah, there's, there's some similarities potentially. <laughs> uh, hey, Mubot. Mubot reminds everybody that SSG and uh, the Game Masters of SSG will never ask you for your password. So if anybody ever asks you for your password, they are not probably from the game. Yeah. You've got orcs? Oh, I've got cave claws. Yeah, so we're doing this at the same time. Aphidil is also doing it, but it's one of those instances where you could get different things. So I've got cave claw burrowers, cave claw diggers, all these cave claws. Now I gotta take out, there's just too many of them. They're putting holes in the floors and yeah, just an infestation. We gotta take care of that. And also relieve them of this wood that they're hoarding. <laughs> Klingon from uh, from Star Trek. Klingon with a K. You know, kapla. I don't remember much mother Klingon much else though. Oh yeah, and they're very big about their houses. Like you've got the house of Moog. That's um, for sure. That's uh, Warp's house. Oh hey. There's a statue on like a pedestal. That's cool looking, check that out. Holding a big shiny thing. That's cool. <laughs> That's okay, I have done, oh, there's the statues I saw on the way in. Oh, look at that. Those are pretty fancy schmanchy. That is some nice work. See, that's some teamwork, they could, they, they, and they might be from a pickup group, but they are working together. Get it? They're holding picks. So they're a pickup group. <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, more wood. Oh, I've defeated all the intruders I need. Okay. Oh, you're fine, Master the Master. Uh, I, uh, you can uh, tease me about my terrible Dutch writing some point it's so funny so we have um i put together like a little whatsapp group for our dutch um class because we talk about stuff and that way we can chat about things outside of class and um all the students in the class are in it and so today i was like oh we should add our docent because she's she's young and a whatsapp using person also and um and she was like, yeah, you can ask me any questions you want. You know, I'm like, yeah, this is a great idea. Um, more resources, the better, right? I mean, both in game and out. And I had named the group like, you know, a new Netherlands um, groupie, groupie. And she, first thing she did after joining the group, she edited it because I had misspelled <laughs> group. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so that was that was actually kind of funny. So yeah, I'm I'm not there yet. Um with all of my Dutchness. Yeah. <laughs> I spelled it the English way, G R O U P instead of uh G R uh oh, there's an E in there somewhere. O E O E P, I think. All right, where's the big bad? Oh, here we go. Near the end, you find some wood. No, that's not what it says. But I mean, it's true. <laughs> yes, I know, Deep Clock Digger, you want to have a conversation, but I want to relieve you of that wood you're standing next to. All right. Ask her to pronounce warning bow for reckoning. I add too many thousand syllables at the end there, but warning, warning bow for reckoning, for reckoning. I can't do shaveninging yet. <laughs> All right, I think this is my big bad. So 
So we're gonna finish him off and uh, take his stores of wood and call it good. <laughs> I have defeated the leader of the intruders. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> also, I don't know about the Klingon thing because I've watched um, Star Trek and Star Wars for well, many decades, like since since the 70s, put it that way. Um, so, and I've also like done a lot of, um, I've attended many a day at sci-fi conventions and um, there's a, a whole bunch of Klingons that, a bunch of people who dress up as Klingons, you know, cosplay and stuff um, at various conventions and I'm in one of those groups, although not very active, obviously, because um, they're in the US and I'm not. But I'm still like technically in the house, but I don't, I never show up. I never show up for parties or anything. I'm like a terrible house member. <laughs> not anymore. But anyway, so yes, um, I'm part of a Klingon cosplay group, I guess is what I would say. So I have some some familiarity with how to spell Klingon and and how to act like a Klingon and stuff. I was actually a judge at a um, a blood wine competition one time. I I would not suggest that, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, I lost some hours for sure. I was supposed to. I had other responsibilities that night, um, which got kind of put to the side for a little while because that blood wine, some of it was strong. Now some of it was like drinking motor oil, like it was not good. Uh, but some of it was quite tasty. Um, I think I am, I found all the wood and that's the whole point of this instance, right? So I think I am good to go once I find the door again. Uh, Neither of those are a door to get out, okay. Oh, I don't need a door. That's fair. I could just leave instance. Ha ha. <laughs> this blood wine is full bodied. I think there's a target in here. <laughs> it's, it's full bodied. There's a full body. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm a native English speaker, so, um, yeah, I should be good at it. If I'm not good at speaking English, it's my own fault. All right, so I'm going to pull up Legendary Moria again here real quick. So this is uh, Sajer Tharak. So as soon as I turn that in here, um, is it the name? Is that that one? Nope, it's not that one. Oh, it's all's well that ends well. So I turn that in and see it disappeared from my list. So um, the funny thing is, so with Legendary Moria and the others, is it doesn't show you which ones you've done, and it doesn't tell you how many you have left to do. It just says, like, complete 12 quests and instances to aid those in Moria. Um, so I don't know how many I have done. I just know that in this list, I can do more of these still. Excuse me. And you can only do each one once to fulfill the quest, the legendary Moria quest. Um, but then once you finish, once you fulfill the quest, once you finish it, you know you turn, you get the benefit of it right away. Like it's an instant um, completion. So all the goodies, you know, you get everything all at once. Um, and then you can pick up like the advanced version, or you could just like ditch the advanced version and pick this one back up again. Um, anyway. Um, the list repopulates and you can start all over again. So you can do it again the next time around, but you have to wait to complete it before you can then pick it up again. Now, the reason why you might want to um, pick up, or might, because the, the advanced version auto bestows, and the reason why you might want to drop that and then pick up the regular one once the timer finishes is um, the advanced one, you have one week to finish. To, to do the thing. Um, whereas with the, the regular one, the basic one, uh, it's an unlimited amount of time, which is really convenient for like for us. Because for example, the last three weeks, we spent most of our time doing festival stuff and we did not work on Legendary Moria. So everything that we had worked on, you know, at all, 
would not have been good. In fact, unfortunately, I did complete Legendary Moria. It gave me the advanced. I didn't remember to drop it and pick up the regular. So we did like six instances that counted towards Legendary Moria, but then mine expired, and so I have to start all over. It's like, ah. Um, so if I'm so much into Star Trek, do, do you watch Star Trek Picard by chance? I do watch season two um, by now. So I have not started watching Picard. I do want to. Um, yeah, we don't have any of the streaming services, so I, I'd have to go do some digging to find out how to watch it. I, and that's, I haven't done that. I haven't actually taken the time to go and look into how to, yeah, how to do it. Um, oh, it's on CBS All Access? Yeah, we don't have, I mean, unless, yeah, CBS All Access is not all access, ha ha. Yeah, we, I mean, yeah, I don't know that we, we don't, well, I mean, we don't, we definitely do not have a subscription to it. How are you watching it then? I am curious. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, Mubot, nice. Oh, Mubot's updated, cool, cool, cool. Um, the Lotro 15th anniversary is coming, it says, starting April 20th, which is in 14 days, um, at 10 a.m. server time with new rewards, and it will run through May 10th, ending at 3 a.m. server time on May 11th. Um, keep an eye out for official and community guides soon after the event launches. Awesome. Um, okay, you're sorry to hear this, but it's worth to watch it. You recommend it. Nice. So how, are you, you're in, are you here in the Netherlands? And if so, like, how are you watching it? I'm curious. Or are you doing it through um, not legitimate means? <laughs> I guess that would be. Because, uh, yeah, we, we tend to stick with stuff like that. Um, let's see. Shall we head to the 21st hall or 23rd hall? Or Oh, hey, I'm also curious, though, what's with these boxes and, like, all these tokens that we just got? Um, okay, so barter items. I can get a sturdy iron key. I can get weathered heritage rune of learning or legend. I can get a box of wood. And what do you get out of the box? I can't remember. We did it once, and I, I remember I was a little underwhelmed. I think it was resources. Oh. <laughs> I take it you are watching it through... Uh, questionable means. Okay. Um, I will probably pass for now until we can find out how to, uh, how to watch it here. I think I'm going to spend these tokens, though, and get some of these runes. Hang on. So let's see. That one is 27,000. That one is 10,000. That one is 4,000. So the big one is the best one. All right. I'm going to get one of those. Wait, is it 47 or... 45? Okay, cool. I have a level 45 character, and I'm using that character to consume all of these runes. Make sure it's not bound. Sweet, it's bound to account, not character. Perfect. Um, yeah, and so I'm using that character to consume all of the um, the runes because they're getting me further that way on the um, on the track. So, like for example, let me show you on the legendary item reward track. Um, time remaining 10 days and one month. So at that point, I don't know what's going to happen if this is just going to go poof or like, yeah, I don't know. So, um, I am, I've gone ahead and claimed a whole bunch of stuff. Ooh, I've earned some more stuff though since the last time I claimed it. Cool. I'm up to level 64 on here. So I'm, I was curious to see if I could get all the way to, um, to 100. I don't think I'm going to make it because I've gone through most of my little, those pucks, as I call them. They look like hockey pucks. Um, anyway, so if I were to consume this with my level 60 character, I might get a bump of like to here. But if I consume it with my level 45 character, because of, you know, how it is relative to that character, it'll be a bigger bump. So I'll probably get like a bump up to here or something like that with the other one. So I just set those aside and I have, uh, I pass them down to my level 45 character and then she just consumes them all. So in the UK, it's on Prime. Um, we have BBC uh, One and BBC Two here, but um, yeah, you watch it on full HD. 
Yeah, we used to have Amazon Prime, but um, it didn't make sense when we moved to the Netherlands because, um, yeah, for one, Amazon Puntanel was only um, books at the time. And uh, we don't order that many books. <laughs> we order some books, like I have a few, uh, but, and we have more in a cupboard, but um, yeah, there's not a need to have, oops. Oh, should I take us to the 21st hall? Why don't I do that? Um, yeah, so we didn't need, and, and actually we don't, I mean, we order more stuff from bull.com than Amazon really these days anyway. So we haven't, uh, yeah, we dropped our Amazon prime cause delivers deliveries to the U S were not of a high priority to us anymore. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, the UK, I don't, yeah, I think what would we need? Oh, orc watch. Um, the Orc Watch. Is the Orc Watch the Orc Watch? Or is it called something else? Mm -hmm. Orc Watch. Yeah, okay, I have it. All right, here we go. Mm. Speaking of housing things, I'm sure we did at some point. Um, <clears throat> uh, Deco de Mew is an awesome website. They have uh, basically an inventory uh, of, oh, thank you, um, of all the housing items that can be found in Lotro. So anytime something new gets added, they go, they get it, they get some pictures of it, and they post it up on, wow, thank you, um, up on their website. And it's basically a database. So if you're searching for something, you could go to the search function and, you know, like if you want to know, hey, are there any tables? You can type in the word table and you know it'll show you all the tables that exist or if you want to know spring festival stuff you can just go to spring and it will show you and so I find that really useful for example when I'm like doing festivals and, um, and I'm, I'm debating whether I want to use some of my festival tokens to purchase a thing um, I can go to um, Deco de Mew's website and you know see what does it look like um, most of the pictures I think are taken in a um, Belfalos house. So there's not a lot of um, decor and stuff that is interfering. They find like a, an alcove that's pretty, um, pretty empty and stuff. They usually get the pictures in. So it's, it's, a, it's a fabulous resource. So I wanted to point that out in case anybody had not heard of it or was not aware of it. Wow, there's a whole bunch of stuff over here. What's going on over here? This looks like another resource place. All right, let's talk to Alwar. Hey, Alwar. We have seen no or sometimes War. <laughs> he says, uh, so this is called Tumen Car Taking Back What Is Ours. The Redhorn Loads are a frightening place to be in. Orcs to the left, Deep Claws to the right, and Gred Bugs right in the middle. Were it not for my duty to the Iron Garrison, I would not even attempt to reclaim Tumen Car. But to me, duty is everything, so here I am. In order to reclaim this mine, we will need to defeat the leadership of the intruders within. Defeat the enemy, be it orc or beast, that leads the intruders within. Doing so should position us more ably to reclaim Kuman Kar in the name of the Iron Garrison. Okay, so defeat the leader. I'll bet he has two other things he wants me to do. What? Stop. How did I know? I've encountered many foes just to get shelter here in Garafarham. Okay. I was hopeful that the lack of resistance uh, here, sir, and I encountered in setting up camp here would be indicative of what was uh, within the mine, but luck was sadly not with me in that. My hopes for an easy reclamation were dashed when I beheld the enemies lurking within. They are many and varied. Can I convince you to provide, provide me aid in expelling these intruders? Okay, and uh, I'm guessing, yeah, collect some miner's toolkits. Um, da -da -da -da. history warns us of the consequences of delving deeper than we should. Yes, it does. We cannot simply be content to reclaim. We must expand. Did you just not hear what you just said? And to do that, we need equipment. What better place to find mining tools than a once functioning mine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but delve too greedily and too deep. Like, do these words mean nothing to you? <sighs> With lessons new. <laughs> Uh, remember the housing item when you drink it takes you to Moria but you're so drunk it's all blurry that you can turn off the drunk part because uh, the post processing effects just FYI um, if you go into your um, options menu which is control O if you want the shortcut 
Um, I usually just do a search, and if you type in post or processing, but post processing effects right there, um, there's a checkbox. If you undo the checkbox, you still have some of the drunk effects in the sense that the screen will move back and forth a little bit, but you don't have the blurriness and the brightness, so you're able to actually see, you know, what you're doing. Oh, I've entered the noises ahead. Suggest something else is in here with you. Dum, dum, dum. Like that scout, perhaps. He was, he was. Wait, why am I not seeing any resources? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Kazan Skarn. Oh, let me switch my thing. There we go, now I see him. Oh, there's a big pit I could fall into. That's exciting. Hmm, let's see. This looks like a dead end. And that looks like a dead end with some really funky mushrooms. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to go this way. Okay. Hey, goblin digger. You just went out of my range. Come back. Or don't. Okay, we're not gonna worry about him right now. But that tells me how to get down, so that's cool. And how to get funky. Um, perhaps the Moria keg. Um, yeah, so there's, oh, like three different kegs, I think. Let's see, there's the, there's the Sinister in League keg. I have, I got that one. There's the, what's it called? Um, so there's one that you can get from the in League. If you become, if you have a high enough rep with them, there's a keg you can get from them. There's a keg that you can get from completing, um, the maze as a member of the in league there's a a quest there um during the spring festival so i got that one and then maybe that's the moria keg no you know i might have to just pop back to the to the house after this instance because i've got there's three of them there yeah there's a moria keg there's the sinister in league keg and i think there's one other that gives you that effects where you you drink it and then it sends you randomly somewhere it's hilarious I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's got to be three because there's one that sends you somewhere randomly in Moria, and then the other two send you somewhere randomly in other in other parts of the world. So like the um, the giant's needle in um, the Misty Mountains, or the Bree Fountain is one of the places it can send you. And there's an effect called "Where's my pants?" So basically, your character is no longer wearing pants. <laughs> so. That's wacky. But that's one of the effects of drinking out of one of those kegs. Um, and I have that one. I think that might be the one that was in the center. Uh, maybe. Now, why do I feel like I'm not going the right way here? All right, we've gone down, down, down. We went that way and we went this way, didn't we? Let's double check. Yep, that's a dead end. All right, dead end. Dead end. Okay, that's not it. All right, let's go here. Oh, here we go. Here's a, a plank. Okay, you proceed deeper. The light of the entrance fades as you enter the unknown. Good. That means I'm on the right track. I don't need light to see you. My arrows can find you regardless. <laughs> but I do want some more scarn. <laughs> oh, it's up above somehow. Hmm. Not sure how I missed that. All right, we'll come back to that. There was a resource instance we were doing for, I think it was something higher level, because I think it was on Evernight. I think it was with our 130 characters. Oh, Eves of Fangorn, okay. So it was probably like 100, 110 level, maybe 120, yeah, probably like 110-ish. <clears throat> um, and I knew I found out where all the scarn was in that one. <laughs> oh, he interrupted me. Tut tut. You know, there's been times when I've like, I just turn around, and I stun them, and then I keep farming, and then after I'm done farming, I un I attack them. It's like <laughs> priorities here, people. <laughs> um, you had the Moria keg because you weren't into the leagues. Um, yeah, I don't think the Ale Association has one. 
I think it's basically two in league named ones or something to that effect. I will, um, yeah, after we're done here. We'll go, I'll just go to the house after we're done here and double check that. All right, so hang on a second, though. I do need to finish this instance here. Plus, you know, there's Scarn. Hmm? Six nodes of Cousin Scarn at the end. Oh, that's nice. Well, I'm almost there. Oh, I got some new stuff. It's a Hunter Supreme Potion of Focus, which gives me a 20% Devastate Magnitude. It lasts for 25 minutes. It adds six focus and increases your potency of your devastating critical hits. So I gotta remember to try and use that in the future. So I thought, well, that's a clever idea. Cause I use the fire oils and the light oils reasonably often. I haven't been today, but I've been slacking today. You know, I've been just letting the minstrel do all the work. <laughs> if you wanna be honest. <laughs> oh, cool, yeah, there's the where's my pants thing from the Lotro wiki. So funny. What a crazy idea. Um, hmm. There is not a whole ton of Kazad Skarn here. Did I get to the end? Let me see. Was that the bad guy? Was that the big guy? Nope, I haven't gotten to the leader, that's why. Okay, they did seem pretty easy. Well, let's see what we got over here. <coughs> hey, Goblin Scout, standing next to some more Kazad Skarn. Let me just relieve you of that. Oh, I have a map. Oh, wow. I am not anywhere close to that. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Oh, hey, here's a goblin digger. Are you my bad guy? No. Do you have any scarn nearby? You don't have any scarn. It's like, what's the point? Oh, I guess they noticed me. Okay. But you still don't have any scarn. Like... What's the point? Um, can't get that way. Hmm. I feel like I've taken a wrong turn somewhere. All right, let's see. Apparently, I want to be in the upper left corner there. But it probably involves some, like, down, 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 circling kind of thing. So, let's see, is that a direction? Wait, where does this go? Did we go this way before? Lovely. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, this is a part of the map. Oh, no, I just turned back. Hmm. I don't want to follow, nope, that's where I just came from. Well, darn it. it, almost sent me into that corner of the map and then it changed its mind. Got all excited there. Nope. Hmm. What about this way? I mean, we've obviously already been this way. There's nobody here. There's no scar. All right. What is this? Oh, we went down this dead end. That was the dead end with the useless guys. Okay. Hmm. Well, this might be a waste of our time because I'm not getting anywhere. It's that same dead end. Did I just go down the same dead end twice? I like instances where I can just jump off a ledge and end up somewhere. Can they let me do that here? Just let me jump off a ledge somewhere, please. This is where I'd be like, hey, Aphidil, just come over here and let me follow you. <laughs> but unfortunately, okay, so we're gonna go left this intersection. Okay. And this seems to be taking us up. Up is not where I thought I was going. What about if I just jump? Nope, won't let me jump. Hmm. Ay, ay, ay. All right, let's try this way. Is this different? Have we been this way? Well, there's no bad guys, so I must have been this way too. Oh, that's the intersection we were just at, isn't it? Bollocks. I am so lost. This is annoying. Hmm. This is why I don't go to Goblin Town by myself. I'm like, I just have Aphidil take me down to Goblin Town. Down, down to Goblin Town. 
Okay. I'm going to look at Aphidil's screen. Yeah, right. So you can't can't blame me because there is too much to do in Lotro and you can never complete all the things in the game. That is so true. Uh, unless you're 24-7 for 14 years. <laughs> Alright, I'll see if I can get... We're going to try and get to the middle-ish. Um, of course, if I'm trying to get there, I probably can't get there. But, you know, how it goes. You know how it goes. Alright, so let's try this way. Oh, hey, I found some scout I hadn't gotten to before. I found a new way. I am... Whoop. I might be where I'm trying to go. See, that's all I needed was to try and go somewhere else. Maybe that got me where I needed to go. It's sending me back up. I was expecting more down. Where Willow knows where I'm at. Well, that's good. Can you come in here and show me? <laughs> you have yet to play that one without getting hardcore lost at least once. Well, you're in good company then. Or I'm in good company, I should say, because I... Yeah, hardcore lost, I think, was pretty accurate. But there's Scar that I haven't gotten to. Oh, hey, it's right behind me. Okay, good. That's all right. Um, okay, so maybe I go this way. Well, now where am I going? Oh, hey, I think I'm at that spot where you were talking about. I'm up high. In, I'm up high. Um, no. Burning cart. I'm looking for a burning cart. All right, let's see if we can find a burning cart. Oh, you're near the end. Uh, a twinge of dread gnaws at the back of your mind. It's not dread, my dude. It is relief. Like, give me the scarn, give me the bad guy, and let's get out of here and go drink some ale from the house. Hey, where will you probably remember? We're talking about <laughs> flaming minecart equals good. You're fantastic. Um, we were talking about the different kegs that you can drink out of and end up in different places. So there's the Moria keg, which sends you into somewhere random in Moria. I don't remember how we get that one. Um, there's the Sinister In League keg, which I can't remember if that's the one I got from the In League or if that's the one I got from, excuse me, from the um, the guy at the festival, at the spring festival. And then, um, yeah, so there's, those are the three, but I can't remember what they're all called. There's, I know there's the Sinister, in league keg and there's the Moria keg, but I can't remember what the third one is called. So in a minute, I'll probably pop. Oh, hey, there's some scar in here. Pop back to the house and take a look because I think we have all three of them. I mean, I could just go to the wiki and look it up, but you know. <laughs> yes, this game should not be work. I agree. <laughs> oh, now I'm finding a bunch of Kazan scar like you were talking about. That's nice. All right, so hang on. Don't see me yet. I want to go invisible. Dude, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Okay, now you can look at me because I'm about to hit you. Excellent. <laughs> so the Lotro Wiki, yeah, in case anybody doesn't know, is run by fans. It's not um, done by SSG or anything like that. Like, it's just a fan thing. Kind of like, you know, what we're doing here. Like, us streamers, we're just fans of the game. We're not, um, we're not, Part of SSG or anything like that. You know what? I have missed a scarn, but I think I think I'm okay with this. I'm just gonna leave the instance. I'm out of here. Hmm? Take the secret door out. Okay, so we're Willow knows the Moria Keg, Sergeant Tom Barter. Oh, okay, so that's also Spring Festival. Oh, the In League Keg was from the fence running. Thank you. That's how I got that one. Because I, I did do the fence running this year. I don't do that every year because it's a little crazy and hard to do sometimes. <laughs> okay, so Legendary Moria. So we're doing uh, Tumengar, which is... Here we go, at the bottom. So as soon as I turn in... Uh, not that one, but this one. Taking back what is ours. And boom, see, it knocked off the bottom. So, so when you do the main quest, when you turn in the main quest, it's uh, it's kind of cool because it turns that finishes it off. Way, hey, somebody else just showed up. No, oh, that's a nice color for that dress. Okay, well, it is quarter past an hour. That happens to be two hours after when I started streaming. 
<laughs> so I think we are about to call this a, uh, a day. I might do the other resource instance after we say goodbye here. Um, so if you had any last minute things you wanted to um, talk about or mention, now is your chance. Um, and then, oh, so yeah, I posted the Friday thing earlier because I wanted to show you that Professor Corey um, He's the Tolkien professor, and uh, that's the what he's known as. And he um, is very deep in uh, Tolkien lore, and he knows a lot about you know Middle Earth and everything. Um, and so he streams on this channel on Fridays um, at one o'clock Eastern time, one p.m. So um, he is great to follow, and he's had he's been off for two weeks because of. Um, he was running a convention and um, uh, I think had a holiday with family. But now he's, I think he's back tomorrow. So I'm very excited about that because he is always um, a delight to listen to. And I swear, I feel like half of my Middle Earth knowledge has come from listening to him, it seems like. <laughs> like it's just, he's really great to listen to. So I uh, encourage you to check that out. Um, and cool, yeah, festival starts in two weeks. Two weeks. So if you are watching this and you have not logged on, to Lotro in the last year, like you missed last year's anniversary festival, um, make sure you get logged in before the next festival if you can. Because the reason for that is because every time um, you log in during that year, between April to April basically, um, you increment your character to the next year. So um, you would log in and get credit for this year that's just coming to an end, uh, Lotro calendar wise. And then once you log in after the anniversary festival starts, then you'll get credit for the next year. So that way you don't miss out on any goodies and you get closer to the next goodies. Cause, cause they seem to get better as you go up in the years, you know? Um, yeah, so cool, cool stuff there. Okay, um, yeah, and you know what? We'll probably do um, some guides. Like I've done, I tend to do <laughs> guides uh, with a huge amount of help from Affidil. Like we have, um, I was gonna say three, but I'm not even sure if that's the right number, um, guides out there on how to do the in-league and the ale association. Uh, you can be a, a member of both of those and there are delivery quests that you can do and those give you um, reputation with that faction and also tokens with that faction. And um, so uh, we did kind of a run through on how you could do that with a hunter. Uh, it takes about 25 minutes with a hunter. Uh, how you could do it without a hunter and you don't have like hardly any skills at all. You just have like travel to home and different things you can earn in the game with reputation like the travel to Oskaruth because you became um, kindred with the Eglane, things like that. So just using in-game travel skills um, that you earn, none, nothing that you have to purchase. So, you know, all of your travel skills are at the one hour max, like they come at, come by default, all of that. So we did a, a video of that as well, just in case you are not running around with a hunter. Because, <laughs> you know, not everybody has a hunter in their, in their uh, pocket to run them around. Uh, Master of the Master says, the one item I regret I never got was the colorful songbird which you could only get by purchasing Mines of Moria expansion pack back in the days. Uh, yeah, and now you can only get it if somebody has it and they put it in your house, right? I, um, yeah, it would, it's, it's interesting because I, I'm torn on that, of course, because on the one side, I would love to have access to these things that people got in the past before I was playing. But on the other side, I appreciate that there are things that you know, it's kind of a one-time only sort of thing. Um, so yeah, so I'm torn about that definitely. So one of the, one of our kinmates has the, um, I guess, I thought it was the Moria, but I guess it must've been a different pack where you got a little mouse um, and he comes out to, it's a housing item also, and it's a wall item. And he comes out and he like nibbles on a little piece of cheese and then he runs back into this hole in the wall. Um, the pesky dormouse, I think it is, it's so cute. So I, um, um, yeah, so he made a couple of characters on the server so that way a couple of us could have each have them in our house because we did the same thing, you know, gave him um, decorating permission so he could go in, put the mouse in my house. Um, and I love it, it's so cute, it's so cute. So I'm really, um, at least there, at least you can do that. And I, I'm really glad for that. Um, and then, yeah, like 
the table that we used earlier, you know, that's um, uh, from uh, War of the Three Peaks, I think it is, was the, the travel table. Um, so yeah, so every one of my characters is getting the hat. Um, yeah, that mouse is so cute. I really, really love the mouse. Um, and then there's also, what did we get from uh, Fate of Gundabad? We got, oh, I didn't, I don't have any in there. Um, maybe it's in my regular, um, the lights. There's like the light of Gundabad or something like that, which it's a housing item, but it has kind of a little bit of a, um, a glow to it, I think. So, and those all, so when you check in with Wenda, is how you pick up, yeah, here it is, a light from Gundabad. That was just auto bestowed. Let me see if I can tell whose this is. Um, bound to account. I'm not sure which one of my characters this belong to. Um, but yeah, the shining crystal lights your way to the halls of Gundabad. So that's kind of cool, right? Um, and it's also a travel item. Oh, and we got, um, here, I'm just gonna run back to the house real quick because I got. Like, I got stuff to show you. Um, and then I'll come back. So you can just stay there, Apadil, if you want. Um, uh, yeah, there's another travel item that I got from another expansion. So Steady Eddie asks, do people ever get married in this game or do any other interesting role-playing stuff? Yes, um, people do, actually. I know there was a wedding ooh, somewhere in the last year or two and most, well, I was gonna say that was gonna happen on specific servers, but that's actually not true. So when you wanna talk role-playing servers though, um, Laurelin is kind of a dedicated role-playing server and it's on the EU server side. And Landreval is listed, I think, as a light role-playing server. So um, those would be two places to check if you want to get in on any of that sort of business. For example, I am a hobbit here. But, um, and I'm on the Treebeard server, but over on Laurelin, I do have Hobbit characters. And on, for example, Fridays, there is a Hobbit event every Friday at the Green Dragon called D Green Dragon Fridays. <laughs> it's very Hobbity, uh, it's in the name. Um, and uh, we do, like, we play music and tell jokes and um, tell riddles, that kind of thing, tell stories. Um, so that goes for like two hours on Friday evenings, 7.30 p.m. UK time. So if you want to get into um, role-playing on as a hobbit, that is um, an easy way to get started there. Um, uh, and that's on Laurelin. Uh, if you are big into wanting to interact in the music scene, whether you want to play or just listen to, um, tons of music on the Landreval server. Um, Landerval is very, very big on that. Um, and that's a lot of fun to go and hang out. Yeah, this is the Blazon of the Great Alliance. That's another travel one. Um, a window to the past. And let's see. And then there's the table. That was a travel one. Um, and then here's the mysterious door. Funny thing is if you go and use it, it sends you to Mordor. <laughs> um, but we don't have Mordor on this server, so it's basically going to be like, it's going to kick me out. <laughs> um, and it's funny because where it drops you, it's so close, you can almost get there. Not even close. Okay, not even this time. Um, oh, and it's probably going to send me back to my starter area, which would be like, what, needle hole? Oh, no, put me in our chat. <laughs> the not so useful place of our chat. That's okay, I'm just going to go back to the um, kinship house because I want to show you guys the kegs real quick before I go. Hmm? Stone troll the oh, you got Stone Troll the second. Awesome. All right, maybe I'll come by your house too then. Um, so yes, there was a couple that got married in game. And um, yeah, I, I remember I was watching a video. Um, yes, you were, I was in Mordor for two seconds. <laughs> Whoosh, out you go. <laughs> oh, check this one out. I love, I've got a little angry little old man Willow. <laughs> that dropped out of the Woe of the Willow instance. And it's a rare drop, so that's pretty exciting. So then I got a Marigold property guard so she can stand there with it. <laughs> Little Woe of the Willow uh, inside jokes there. Because that's the instance. She's in the instance. So. Um, but yeah, I was watching a, a replay video of some of a music event, and there was uh, a wedding. And it was like two to three hour event uh, that was just wedding stuff. So... Yes, people definitely get married in the game. Absolutely. 
Um, so this is our kinship house. Sorry, it's I have a lot of stuff in here, and there's music, and yeah. So it's uh, it was still loading there. <laughs> but so here's our little collection of kegs. So we've got the in league keg, which has um, so you you would drink it. And then it says, on use, drinking this brandy may not be the safest thing you can do. Um, and it, it has a little, like, a timer. And then when it wears off, um, it sends you away to one of those, like, seven different locations. Uh, it says, you feel a bit woozy. More brandy will solve that. It is a hobbit keg full to the brim of, with triple strength brandy. Drink this at your own risk. That's the in-league keg. Then we have the in-league sinister keg. Drinking this brandy may not be the safest thing you can do. You feel a bit woozy, more brandy will solve that. A very sinister keg filled to the brink with some foul stuff that probably came from the Forsaken Inn's own recipes and ingredients. To drink from this would not be wise. And then um, the filed in league keg is just a decoration item. Um, in league decorative keg is just decoration. Where's my other one? I thought I had, what? Where's my third keg? Did I not get the... Oh, I don't have the Moria keg. Why do I not have the Moria keg? Hmm, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look into that. I'll have to find it. The Golden Woods music. I try to make sure there's really fun music um, in all of the houses that I have. Um, so there we go. So now I've got like a little effect up there. It says party time. It's party time. You find an irresistible urge to find a party somewhere. And then on expiration, it says, come here, yeah, you, you, who, you, you, cutie, fuzzy, hobby, you have furry feet, let me pet them. <laughs> so one second, and then I'm going to fall over. <sighs> and it says, wait, what, where? That's the effect I have on me now. And there we go. It all goes fuzzy. Yeah, I got to grind for the Moria keg. I got to go figure out where it is. <gasps> I'm on Dead Man's Perch. Well, look at that, in Breland. All right, that's not a bad, uh, not a bad thing. I ended up in the Brie Fountain the other day. That was hilarious. So yeah, just in case you're curious, I am over here in the Barrow Downs, kind of in that space between the north and the south, kind of. Um, but you know what's interesting here, and I always forget. And then Nick, when I bring a character back here, I'm like, oh, so good. Um, check out that view of Brie from up here in Dead Man's Perch. So good, right? Oh, here comes the rain again. It's all clear and brie. Look at that. That's a gorgeous picture. Just gorgeous. So um, let's see. Yes. Oh, the freebie code right now is still on we go. Um, it should change sometime later on today. And then the new sales will hit um, later on today as well. Although it might not hit till midnight or 3 a.m. or whatever. So, okay. All right. Well, I think that is a great place to end the stream. Um, but I will bring, bring my UI back up if I can remember how to do that. Yeah, oh, there we are. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you folks for coming along with me on this journey today. Um, you know, I, I often say it, and I do mean it, that I really enjoy my time in Middle Earth. I have a lot of fun here, as you can tell. And... Um, and I'm always glad to uh, to have you all come along with me into our little virtual world of exploring Middle Earth together and doing fun and silly things. So, um, so thanks for coming along. I am here every Thursday um, at 1 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Even when the clocks change, I just I just stick to Lotro server time. I figure it's just easier than trying to get y'all in the U.S. to convert to whatever I'm doing. So. Um, yeah, so 1 p.m. U.S. time on Thursdays, I'm always here. And if you ever want to talk about um, plugins and how those work and get some insights and behind the scenes on that, Affidil, who was running around with me earlier, streams on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So you can see the background behind me or you can see the background behind them. <laughs> You'll be like, hey, if I put these two together, I have a full house. <laughs> Um, you've always said that if you chose what part of Middle Earth to live in, it would be Bree Town. Well, there you go. That's the, that's where you would be, is way over there. I think it looks pretty good from here, though. Isn't that a pretty awesome view? Oh, and you can see the screen is still shifting back and forth because of the, the drink effects, but, um, it's not fuzzy because I took off post-processing effects. So. All right. Well, um, oh, hey, we should check and see if there's a raid to be done. Yeah, let's see, is, uh, Green-Eyed Gamer... 
And Sean? Okay. So Green Eyed Gamer um, seems to be pretty chill and uh, is, is, so the Lotro channel likes to keep things very, you know, T for teen, um, keep it PG and family friendly. And uh, Green Eyed Gamer seems to follow that as well. So we feel pretty good about rating her. Um, so we're going to send you all off to her in just a moment. So, all right. Thanks everybody. And uh, as always, uh, remember to stay connected to that Hobbit side of your heart. All right, we'll see you next week. Thanks, bye.